I compiled a list of 1,000 facts from across 10 of Nintendo's biggest franchises. They've been separated into 10 different sections, so be sure to use the timestamps down below to skip to your favorite series, or just stay and watch from beginning to end. All right, let's get started. Apparently, Lacto owns all the racetracks. In Super Mario Kart's original 1992 instructional booklet, Lacto greets the reader by saying he runs this track. Screen sheeting is apparently not just allowed, but encouraged in battle mode. A Mario Kart game was in development for the Virtual Boy, but was ultimately scrapped due to poor system sales. Super Nintendo World at Universal Japan has a ride called Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge, which uses augmented reality technology. This ride will also come to Universal Studios Hollywood, Orlando, and Singapore in the near future. Toadette, Baby Daisy, Baby Rosalina, and Pink Old Peach are the only four characters to make their first game appearance in a Mario Kart game. Toadette in Double Dash, Baby Daisy in Wii, and Baby Rosalina and Pink Old Peach in Mario Kart 8. Kemic was shown in screenshots of early Mario Kart 64 gameplay, but was cut at the last minute and replaced by Donkey Kong. He was also speculated to be playable in Mario Kart 8 at some point in development because an unused emblem of his was found in the files. In the Japanese version of Mario Kart 64, there were in-game Mario-themed ads that were knockoffs of big-name American brands like Goodyear and Mobile One. However, when the game was on its way to the Americas, Nintendo changed the ads to avoid legal actions from the respective companies. Mario Kart 8 is the best-selling Mario Kart game with over 39 million units sold. In the Japanese version of Super Mario Kart, Peach and Bowser's winning animations have them chugging champagne. This was changed in other releases because they decided glorifying alcohol to children wasn't a good idea. Mario Kart Wii's online play was discontinued on May 20th, 2014. This made it impossible to play the game online, but 10 days earlier, a fan-made private server called Wiimify made it possible to play Mario Kart Wii online. It can still be used to this day to play Mario Kart Wii with your friends. Pac-Man is playable in the Mario Kart arcade games because they are produced by Bandai Namco. SNES Rainbow Road has been remade more than any other course in the series, being remade four times. A go-kart racing attraction in Tokyo was sued by Nintendo in 2017 for copyright infringement. The former name of the company, Mari Kart, let tourists dress up as their favorite Nintendo characters and ride around downtown Tokyo. They have since rebranded to Streetcar Akihabara. Shy Guy is only playable in Mario Kart DS when using DS Download Play. Rob was the first non-Mario character to be playable in a Mario Kart game. If you hit LRLRXYXYZ in the menu after a race in Mario Kart Double Dash, a secret code will appear. This was used in contests in Japan which let racers submit their times for prizes. On the track Peach Beach in Double Dash, you can see another course, Daisy's Cruiser, out in the distance. This is actually quite common in Mario Kart Double Dash, as many courses can actually be seen out in the backgrounds of other tracks. The most obvious example of this is the fact that Rainbow Road takes place above Mushroom City. This continued in Mario Kart 8 as a local information map in Super Bell Subway shows that the subway system is underground the same town N64 Rainbow Road hovers over. The L on Luigi's hat on the box art of Mario Kart Double Dash is backwards. Music Park is called Melody Motorway in PAL regions. The Thwomp's laugh in Mario Kart 64 is actually just Wario's slow down. <laughs> In the Japanese version of Mario Kart 64, Charles Martinet's name was misspelled. If you let the music on the results screen of Mario Kart 64 loop exactly 64 times, you'll hear a secret alternate version. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit was produced by VLAN Studios, a small team made up of numerous industry veterans. It was the studio's first released game. Retro Studios, the creators of Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze, helped on 16 tracks in Mario Kart 7, including DK Jungle. There's an official virtual reality Mario Kart game. Mario Kart Arcade GP VR was released by Bandai Namco in 2017. The Japanese announcer for Mario Kart Arcade GP also voiced Ash Ketchum in the Japanese Pokemon anime. As it stands, the Wii U can play the most Mario Kart games out of any other Nintendo console. It runs Mario Kart 8 natively, Mario Kart Wii through its backwards compatibility, and Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64, Mario Kart Super Circuit, and Mario Kart DS through the virtual console. In 2020, Coldstone Creamery released Mario-themed desserts including a Rainbow Road-themed ice cream cake from September 30th to December 15th. Guinness World Records ranked Super Mario Kart number one of the top 50 console games of all time based on initial impact and lasting legacy. Every single mainline Mario Kart game places within the top four of its respective console's best-selling games. 
Mario Kart 8's remake of N64 Rainbow Road was not the first time that course was remade. It appeared, albeit, only slightly altered in F-Zero X. Toadette, the first original character in Mario Kart. She debuted in Mario Kart Double Dash. Mario Kart 8's Master Cycle directly inspired Breath of the Wild's Master Cycle Zero, which was subsequently added to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, bringing this whole story full circle. In German, the Master Cycle is named Eponiter, pulled from Link's horse, Epona. In Mario Kart Wii, when playing in multiplayer, the question marks in the item boxes spin around within the box. They're static in single player mode. Mario Kart Wii is the only game in the Mario Kart series where the drivers do not vocally react to getting inked by a blooper. There is a Mario Kart Wii course named Galaxy Coliseum which was exclusive to online tournaments. Donkey Kong Jr. is only playable in two Mario Kart games, Super and Tor. He was found, however, in an early build of Double Dash's character select screen. According to Elon Musk, a Mario Kart game that would have been played on Tesla vehicles was proposed to Nintendo, but Nintendo didn't give them the license. In Mario Kart Double Dash's code, there are references to a reverse cup, which may have had courses played backwards. This wouldn't be possible until Mario Kart Tour, which had reverse variations of its courses. The top two best-selling games on the GameCube are Super Smash Bros. Melee and Mario Kart Double Dash, and these games' development might be more intertwined than you think. The Melee models of Mario and Luigi were used during development, as seen in this trailer. Mario Kart DS was the first Mario game that used Nintendo's Wi-Fi connection. Up until Mario Kart Wii, all races would have 8 racers, but starting with Mario Kart Wii, that number was bumped up to 12, then back down to 8 in Mario Kart 7, and now back up to 12 in Mario Kart 8. There's a glitch in Mario Kart 64's Choco Mountain that literally lets you go around the finish line pole, back over the finish line, and then counts it as a lap. This glitch makes use of invisible checkpoints that tell the game where you are in a lap. Mario Kart 64's Moo Moo Farm is called Momo Farm in Japan, because that's the sound associated with cows in Japan. Mario Kart Wii was the first game to introduce bikes. Villager Girl is just a palette swap in Mario Kart 8, but in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, she gets her own character slot. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, and Bowser are the only six characters to appear in each mainline game. A promotional deal between Nintendo and Mercedes-Benz led to three Mercedes cars being added as DLC vehicles in Mario Kart 8. The Mario Kart 8 DLC track Excite Bike Arena has randomly generated ramps and hazards each race. This is a callback to the original Excite Bike on the NES which did this as well. Everybody knows that the escalators on Coconut Mall each go in different directions, but did you know that there's a nearby Pianta pointing to the one that's going up? Speaking of Piantas, Coconut Mall is apparently on Isle Delfino, according to the official Mario Kart Wii game guide published by Prima. The giant statue of Mario in DK Summit will be replaced as a Mii if you're playing as a Mii character. Unfortunately, this doesn't explain why it's not a statue of DK in the first place. The F-Zero announcer yells, yeah, the final lap, as you head into the final lap of Big Blue, but not Mute City in Mario Kart 8. Waluigi's Pinball isn't just a track, but it's also the name of the tennis court in Mario Sports Mix. While Hyrule Circuit, Animal Crossing, and Urchin Underpass all have unique item roulette sounds based off their series, Waluigi's Pinball is the only original course to have one. There was a scrapped mission mode for Mario Kart Wii. The new courses in Mario Kart 7 had the new logo as the starting line banner, while the retro tracks have the classic logo. Mario Kart 64 isn't the 64th Mario Kart game, it's actually only the second. The original gimmick for Mario Kart 8 was supposed to be a drill that allowed players to drive through the earth. Once they decided to use anti-gravity as the game's gimmick, they were inspired by the way tops hit each other and gain speed, kinda like Beyblades. In Mario Kart Wii, Peach wears her hair down in the opening cutscene, and in a ponytail while racing. Mario Kart DS and Tor are the only two games in which Lakitu doesn't start the race. The worst-selling Mario Kart game has still sold almost double the best-selling Fire Emblem game. Both of these games were developed by Intelligent Systems. Miraculously, this isn't the first time Fire Emblem and Mario Kart's paths have crossed. Pre-orders for Mario Kart Double Dash came with a bonus disc containing playable demos, game trailers, and even extra transferable content for Fire Emblem on the GBA. Mario Kart 64's beta name was Mario Kart R. The special cup in the Chinese IQ player version of Mario Kart 64 is called the IQ Cup. You know the trick at the start of a race where you press A right as the 2 starts to fade on the screen? Well, that started in Mario Kart DS. Mario Kart DS was also the only game in the series to have a mission mode. There was also a battle course in Mario Kart DS that was in the shape of a DS. 
Similarly, in Mario Kart Double Dash, there was also a battle course in the shape of a GameCube. Snaking was a technique popular among Mario Kart pros that allowed players to chain mini turbos on straightaways. This has since become obsolete in recent games because it has been made harder to gain mini turbos without turning corners. Another technique from Mario Kart 8 called fire hopping allowed players to extend the length of their boost from mushrooms, ramps, etc. by hopping back and forth right after gaining their boost. This was patched out in the Switch port Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In the demo version of Mario Kart 8, Twisted Mansion was called Boo House. Mario Kart 8 has by far the most unlockable characters, that number being 14. Honey Bee was a playable character in Mario Kart 7, for some reason. Speaking of Mario Kart 7, all of the starting characters in that game were the same as in Super Mario Kart, except for the fact that Donkey Kong replaces Donkey Kong Jr. The playable Lakitu has a red shell, while the Lakitu who runs the races has a green shell. The only unlockable character in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is Gold Mario, who can be unlocked by winning all 12 200cc cups. All the different translations of Maple Tree Way roughly translate to Maple Tree Way, Wiggler's Woods, or something similar. Makes sense. However, the French Nintendo of America translator translates to Road to the Sugar Shack, which begs the question, what the hell is a sugar shack? Mario Kart 8 uses tracks for battle mode instead of having dedicated battle courses. If you win all the cups in both Mirror Mode and 200cc, you'll unlock special opening intros for Mario Kart 8. My favorite would have to be this one. Luigi Kart 8! If a blooper is used while you're using a piranha plant, the piranha plant will actually eat the blooper. If you honk your horn at other racers in Mario Kart 8, you can actually see them jump in their seats. The blue shell is actually called the spiny shell. The spiny shell was created for Mario Kart 64 to keep players spread out so the game could run more smoothly. Upon starting the game, Mario says Yahoo on the Nintendo logo screen for Mario Kart DS when playing on the original DS. On the DS Lite, DSi, 3DS, and Virtual Console, he says, here we go. If you mash the L button while getting an item, the spinning animation will speed up and give you your item quicker, which is crazy since I never knew that until researching for this video. The Monty Moles and Moo Moo Farm on Mario Kart 64 aren't actually Monty Moles. They're referred to in the instruction manual as Chubbies. Mario Golf Super Rush reuses Pauline and King bob voice clips from Mario Kart Tour. Although Pac-Man is not a full character in Mario Kart 8, he's available as a playable Mii costume through Amiibos. In 2019, Hot Wheels released Mario Kart-themed cars. Mario Kart Double Dash can theoretically have 16 player LAN multiplayer if you have 8 GameCubes and 2 players connected to each system. The beta version of the SNES Rainbow Road was originally much narrower. And finally, the original idea for Mario Kart didn't even have Mario in it. It was originally just a guy with overalls and a helmet holding a banana. Miyamoto was impressed but thought the game seemed a little bland, so he told the developers to focus on the banana. That led them to think about Donkey Kong, which in turn brought Mario characters to the game. Rhydon was the first Pokemon ever designed. Ash's Pikachu and Team Rocket's Meowth are supposed to be opposing forces in the anime, but the rivalry goes even deeper. Pikachu's Pokedex number is 25 and Meowth is 52. Pikachu is also technically a mouse and Meowth is a cat. Their bad blood runs deep. All these Pokemon games have an 87 on Metacritic, but the best game in the series sits alone at 88. That's Pokemon Y. Why this? I have no clue. The worst entry, not counting spin-offs, is Pokemon Shining Pearl at 73. Counting spin-offs, it's not even close. The worst entry is undoubtedly Pokemon Rumble Rush, sitting at a gold 42. Wanna play Rumble Rush? Well, you can't. It was shut down on July 22nd, 2020. Flabebe is the shortest Pokemon, coming in at only 10 centimeters. In the first episode of the anime, Pokemon I Choose You, there's a scene where Spearow chases down Pikachu. The hunt is seen from the eyes of the Spearow and is in black and white, so Spearows are colorblind. Pokemon Stadium's Electabuzz has six fingers on each hand. This was probably a mistake because he only has five in every other appearance. Cosmome is apparently only 0.1 meters in height, yet weighs an insane 999.9 kilograms. Ash's name in Japan is Satoshi, reportedly named after the creator of Pokemon Satoshi Tajiri. Ash's rival Gary is also named after Satoshi Tajiri's real-life rival Shigeru, serving from the one and only Shigeru Miyamoto. In Pokemon Ruby, Magikarp's Pokedex entry calls it a pathetic excuse for a Pokemon. 
In 2000, magician Yuri Geller sued the Pokemon Trading Card Company for $80 million for using the Pokemon Kadabra, claiming they infringed on his identity. A Kadabra card has not been issued since. Pokemon is a portmanteau of pocket monsters. Clefairy was originally going to be Pokemon's mascot before Pikachu was ultimately chosen. In episode 38 of the first season of the Pokemon anime titled Electric Soldier Porygon, a series of flashing lights in the final few minutes of the episode left over 600 children in Japan with epileptic seizures. Luckily, none were seriously injured, but still, this is a pretty scary fact nonetheless. Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee are inspired by the martial artist Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. They were also named after famous martial artists in Japan, Sawamura and Ibihara, being Sawamular and Ibiwular, respectively. There's a Pokemon Gold and Silver demo that included many cut beta Pokemon that might have been in the game. Of the three starters in it, only Chikorita made it into the game. Speaking of betas, in Red and Blue's beta, Coughing and Weezing were named Nye and La, in reference to New York and Los Angeles pollution. Mew was added to Pokemon Red and Green at the very last minute, without permission from the higher-ups. The story goes that the development was wrapping up and developers had just a few more bites to fit in as secret Pokemon. They released the game and the rest was history. The first mythical Pokemon was born. Rumors then spread quickly of a secret Pokemon, only obtainable via cheats or Easter eggs. The most famous of all of these was that you had to obtain Mew under the truck in Vermilion City, which turned out to be very false. Because of Mew, Pokemon started introducing mythical Pokemon available at special promotional events at places like conventions and GameStop. The Master Ball has only been used once in the Pokemon anime, being used in Season 7, Episode 35, Whizcash and Ash. In it, a fisherman tries to catch a Whizcash using the Master Ball, but surprisingly, the Whizcash actually eats it, making the only time the Master Ball has ever failed to catch a Pokemon. The furthest back you can transfer a Pokemon is from Gen 3. This is because the jump from Gen 2 to Gen 3 included massive overhauls to Pokemon moves and IVs, which made transferring them nearly impossible. There's an unused Safari Zone in Pokemon Gold and Silver that can only be explored using glitches. There was a proposed Pokemon based on Dolly the Clone Sheep, but it was ultimately removed for being too controversial. Everyone knows that Ekans spelled backwards is Snake, but did you know that Rotom spelled backwards is Motor? You probably know the legendary birds' names are based off the Spanish numbers uno, dos, tres. But did you know that Hydreigon's evolution line is actually based on the German numbers ein, zween, and dre? Before officially being announced in the West, many people thought that Meryl's real name was Pika Blue due to its mouse-like features and the fact that it's blue. Each Pokemon region is based on a real-life location. The first four are based on locations in Japan, Unova is based on New York, Talos is based on France, Alola is Hawaii, Dalar is Great Britain, and Paldea is Spain. Polyworld swirls are actually based on the transparent underbellies of tadpoles that show their intestines. 95% of our viewers aren't subscribed, which means that their YouTube unsubscribed you or you just found this channel. So if you do enjoy this video, please hit subscribe. It's completely free and you can unsubscribe at any point. The rarest Pokemon you can find is a shiny Spinda with identical spots as another Spinda. The chances of finding an identical Spinda is about 1 in 4 billion, and multiplying that by the shiny odds in Gen 3, that comes out to be 1 in 32 trillion 768 billion. The ZBTB7 cancer-causing gene was originally named Pokemon. The Pokemon company was obviously not thrilled with this, and they threatened legal action, and it was quickly changed. Ho-Oh uh -oh appears in the very first episode of the Pokemon anime, even though Gold and Silver hadn't been released at that time. There are only 52 Ice-type Pokemon, making it the rarest type in the series. On the opposite side of the spectrum, Water-type is the most abundant Pokemon typing, with 146. In Season 6, Episode 16 of Adventure Time, a Pokeball can be seen in Jake's mom's weapon room. A game idea extremely similar to Pokemon Go was actually a Google Maps April Fool's joke in 2014. Niantic Labs split from Google in 2015. It seems extremely likely that this April Fool's joke actually ended up being the prototype to what would become Pokemon Go. Pokemon Puzzle League is the only Pokemon game to be released in the West, but not in Japan. You can actually fish in the Rhydon statues inside of Pokemon Gyms and Pokemon Red and Blue. Mag Cargo is 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit which is roughly two times the surface of the sun. Makes sense to me. Psychic types are weak against ghost, bug, and dark types because they're common fears. The Pokemon on Slowbro's tail is actually a shelter, even though they look nothing like a shelter. The rarest Pokemon card is the Illustrator Pikachu card. It was awarded to the winners of an art contest, and only 39 are known to exist. YouTuber Logan Paul bought a PSA 10 Illustrator Pikachu in 2022 for over $5 million, and even wore it around his neck while entering a WWE fight. 
Pokemon Red and Green were released in Japan in 1998, with a blue version coming out a couple months later with improved graphics and dialogue. This version was actually used as a template for all international releases. The shell on Paris is actually a parasite, and when Paris evolves, the parasite actually takes over Paris' body and controls the new parasect. According to the Pokedex, Drifloons trick children to thinking they're real balloons to get them to hold on to them. Once they are, the Drifloons float away and steal the children. Wobbuffet's body is actually a decoy, and the little tail guy in the back is actually the real Wobbuffet. Gen 7 is the first generation to introduce Ultra Beasts, which are not legendary Pokemon. However, the game's code essentially recognizes them as legendaries. Despite their great power, Ultra Beasts are just typical Pokemon in the dimensions they come from. They're about as rare as Rattatas and Pidgeys in our own Pokemon universe. Speaking of Ultra Beasts, this is what their theme sounds like reversed. Shiny Pokemon were introduced in Gen 2, but you could actually catch Shiny Pokemon in Gen 1. Let me explain. In Gen 2, Shiny Pokemon are determined by their IVs. If the Pokemon you caught in Gen 1 has the required IVs and is traded to a Gen 2 game, it will magically appear Shiny in your game. Piggybacking off that last fact, because Shinies were based on their IVs in Gen 2, the only unknown Pokemon that were able to be Shiny were coincidentally I and V. This fact blows my mind. If a Charmander, Charmeleon, or Charizard lose their Tail Flame, they will actually die. Heatran is arguably the most resistant Pokemon ever, having four single resistances, five double resistances, and an immunity. They made Pikachu less fat in the new games and media, and while that may not be the most interesting fact, it sure is the saddest, because look how cute this Pikachu is. In Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, there's an exploit using Bi-Barrel that'll take you out of bounds, where you can access the mythical Pokemon Shaman without Oak's letter quest. Even funnier, however, is the fact that the developers didn't even patch this out when Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl launched, and decades later, you could still use this exact same glitch. Electros is the only Pokemon that currently takes no super effective damage. While electric types usually are weak to ground moves, Electros has the ability to levitate, which makes it immune. Despite trading cards being a central part of the Pokemon franchise, Nintendo's only released one Pokemon Amiibo card, being Shadow Mewtwo for Pokemon Tournament's console release. Because Pokemon Red and Blue didn't have breeding as a mechanic, Nidoking and Nidoqueen are the only Pokemon from that generation to have genders, which explains why they strangely have separate Pokemon entries. Pikachu means sparkly mouse in English. While you're probably mispronouncing many Pokemon's names anyways, a very confusing name is Mantines. Many people wonder if it's pronounced Mantine for Manta and Marine, or Mantine for Manta and Brine. However, this is especially confusing when the name is pronounced both ways in anime. In 2014, a stream called Twitch Plays Pokemon went live that allowed viewers to control the game through button commands in chat. The stream quickly rose in popularity, peaking at 121,000 viewers, and they actually beat the game in just 16 days. When turning on a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance, you can actually change the screen to various different colors by pressing combinations with the D-pad with A and B. Even cooler, if you do this while booting up Pokemon Red and make the screen black, you can easily travel through the rock tunnel without having to use Flash. While Pseudo Wudo looks like a tree, it's actually a rock-type Pokemon that hides amongst the trees to avoid attack. Drowsy is actually based on the real animal Tapir, which are believed to ward off nightmares according to Japanese folklore. The move Splash is actually a mistranslation of Hop. This is why Spoink and Hopip seem to always be splashing. This also relates back to Magikarp, whose signature move Splash, or really Hop, is based on the Chinese legend that a carp that can jump over a waterfall will become a powerful dragon. Because Chadot can recite audio it hears from humans in Pokemon Diamond, it can use the move Chatter where it will repeat audio previously recorded on the DS's microphone. The louder the recording, the higher chance the target becomes confused, but this feature was removed in Pokemon X and Y, so the target would always become confused. Pokemon is currently the highest grossing franchise ever, surpassing Star Wars and even Mickey Mouse. There's a theory that Gengar is actually Clefable's shadow. This is because the body shapes match and Gengar is referred to as the shadow Pokemon in the Pokedex. Many believe the Game Boy Micro is Nintendo's smallest system ever, but in 2001 Nintendo released the Pokemon Mini, a fully functional handheld with interchangeable cartridges with a size comparable to a Tomagotchi. A Nintendo home console can be seen in the main character's bedroom at the beginning of every game in the Pokemon series. Pokemon Crystal could connect to cell phones in Japan to collect special items, Pokemon, and even battle online all the way back in 2001. 
In Gen 1, there was a 1 in 255 chance that a Master Ball would actually fail. Gen 5 introduced the most Pokemon out of any other generation with 156. While the odds of this happening are very rare, it is sometimes possible to encounter an uncatchable shiny Pokemon. For instance, Wally's Ralts in Pokemon Ruby, the Starly you battle in Pokemon Diamond, and Professor Minchino she introduces to you in Pokemon Black all have the standard odds of being shiny. Harmonite was a rhythm-based eShop exclusive game for the 3DS developed by Game Freak. Because of their involvement, you can actually see hot air balloons with Pikachu and Pokemon designs in the background of some levels. Inkay can be evolved by hitting level 30 while your system is upside down. Arceus will change colors based on which type form it takes on. However, Arceus' name will also change based on the type if it hasn't been given a custom name. Many players use this to their advantage. For instance, a player might name his water type Arceus Arceus Grass to bait opponents into using a resisted move. Shiny Pokemon weren't officially called Shiny Pokemon until Gen 5. Game Freak adopted the fan name given by the community for the shiny sparkle effect they have when they appear. If a Pokemon were to theoretically have every single type, it would only be weak to rock. Two-thirds of the Pokemon Company's revenue comes from merchandise sales. Solgaleo is weak to fire, and Lunala is weak to dark, which is funny because they're the mascots of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, respectively. There's a protein called Pikachurin that does something with her body. I'm not a scientist, so I have no clue what these charts mean, but yeah, that's pretty cool nonetheless. Lugia was actually created for the second Pokemon movie. After the movie release, Game Freak loved the Pokemon so much they made Lugia game canon and even the mascot of Pokemon Silver. Empoleon is 5'7", which is very slightly taller than Napoleon Dynamite, who is 5'6". Yo, just found this while editing? I just said Napoleon Dynamite. It was supposed to be Napoleon Bonaparte, but uh, I looked up Napoleon Dynamite's uh, actor and he's 6'1", so he's definitely taller than all of them. So, yeah, back to the video. Kangaskhan are born with the Kangaskhan baby already in their pouch. Azuril can change genders when evolving into Meryl. In some religious groups, Pokemon is actually seen as controversial due to evolution mechanics. But really, Pokemon evolution has nothing to do with evolution at all. Evolution in Pokemon is really based more on the maturation of Pokemon from one stage of its life to another, and not based on the survival of the fittest generational changes explained by Darwin. Arceus is known as the creator of all Pokemon, while Mew is known as the ancestor of all Pokemon. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire were the first games to introduce 2v2 battles. Interacting with the TV in the player's house in Ruby and Sapphire will prompt the TV to describe the movie as two men dancing on a giant piano, which is a reference to the movie Big. Pokemon X and Y introduced the least amount of Pokemon being 72. Sophocles' shirt in Pokemon Sun and Mood displays a Game Boy with a link cable, a callback to how players would link Pokemon games before Wi-Fi. Pokemon Tournament's name is a portmanteau of Pokemon and Tekken. Mewtwo, Rowlet, and Torchic are each the favorite Pokemon of one Switch Shop member. In the original concept for Mario 64, there was going to be over 40 plus levels, just like the old 2D Mario games. But with data constraints, they ended up going for more exploration based levels and basically invented the sandbox collectathon. If you punch butterflies, they will sometimes turn into bombs. Mario 64 was the first game in which Charles Martinet was the voice actor for Mario. The skybox for Wet Dry World is actually the photograph of Shabam Yemen, with the exception of the red building in the background. The red building is a mosque in Cairo, Egypt. In the summer of 2020, a source code leak of many old Nintendo games, including Mario 64, was found. In it was discovered that a prototype version of Luigi was at one point in development for the game, but in the end, it was scrapped due to hardware limitations at the time. The famous backwards long jump glitch that allowed players to skip large portions of the game was actually patched out way back in 1997 in the Shindu release of the game. With it also came other changes like this title screen easter egg, texture changes, and voice line changes. The wing cap theme is actually the track Powerful Infant from Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. The original track's tempo is a bit slower. You know how you can use both the Metal and Vanish Cap in Dire Dire Docks? Well, in the files for the game, there was actually a texture for a Metal Wing, supposedly for use when the Wing Cap and the Metal Cap were both worn at the same time. It is impossible to obtain both of them at the same time in the game, but if a hacking device is used, it is possible to wear both the Wing Cap and Metal Cap. Mips the Rabbit's name is an homage to the processor used in the N64, microprocessor without interlocked pipeline stages. The sound effect the baby penguin makes is actually a car lock noise. 
After 100%ing the game, if you use the now unlocked cannon in the courtyard and fly up to the roof of the castle, you'll actually find Yoshi there. If you talk to him, he'll give you 100 lives and a special triple jump. Super Mario Sunshine is the only fully voiced Mario game, with full-on cutscenes and everything. What's this icky paint like goop? It's moving! Many of the names of the levels in Mario Sunshine are actually Italian like Gelato Beach, Rico Harbor, and Pianta Village. Isle Delfino is a literal Italian translation of Dolphin Island, which seems to be a reference to the GameCube's codename, Dolphin. Serena Beach is actually in the shape of a GameCube controller. There's a remix of the Noki Bay theme which was supposed to be used when riding a Yoshi. However, Yoshi never makes an appearance in Noki Bay, which leads many to believe that at one point in development, Yoshi was actually supposed to be used in Noki Bay. In the 2001 Space World trailer for Super Mario Sunshine, a human NPC was present and was either planned to be in the game or was used as a placeholder. Either way, I'm definitely glad they got rid of them and used Piantas instead. El Piantismo is actually the postman from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Flood and Bowser Jr.'s brush are actually inventions by Professor Egad from the Luigi's Mansion games. In the cutscene at the beginning of the game when you meet Flood, in this one specific shot there are many easter eggs. In one of them you can see in the bottom left corner many highlights from Mario's career, such as his fights against Bowser in Super Mario Bros, World, and 64. When you lose a life, Mario will sometimes say, Avadovici, which means goodbye in Italian. Oh, I'm so sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> It's rumored that Super Mario Sunshine is actually the game that inspired Nintendo developers to make Splatoon. The Super Mario 128 tech demo, which made use of 128 separate Mario entities, is actually what ended up becoming Super Mario Galaxy. The weird gravity and terrain inspired Nintendo into looking into making a full game of these kind of playgrounds. In Rolling Gizmo Galaxy, there was a bunch of star bits that appeared to be in the shape of a groupie from The Legend of Zelda. The entirety of Rosalina's storybook was written over the course of one night by Yoshiaki Koizumi. Star bits are actually based on real-life Japanese and Portuguese candy called coin pito. Sorry if I also mispronounced that. Coin pitos are actually used as models in other Nintendo properties. Examples include the gratitude crystals from The Legend of Zelda and star fragments from Animal Crossing. The Japanese Imperial Army's military combat ration tins actually contain coin pitos. They're great for their calorie content, but also for their ability to help produce saliva so soldiers can eat dry bread easier. In Bowie based Galaxy, there is actually a planet that happens to be in the shape of a Pokemon. There's a sign hidden behind the door at the beginning of Good Egg Galaxy. It seems to be placed there as a shortcut to be able to have the door be interactable without actually programming the door to be readable. The boss Megaleg is actually a repurposed scrapped boss from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The philosophy Koizumi had when creating Galaxy was that he wanted players 5 to 95 to be able to enjoy the game. While this is a good thing, it did make the game quite a bit too easy for Koizumi's liking. So they changed Mario's 8 life meter from 64 in Sunshine all the way down to 3 to make the game a bit more challenging. If you collect the max number of star bits, 9999, all the coconuts in the game will turn into watermelons. Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2 are the two highest rated Nintendo games of all time. Super Mario Galaxy 2's original name was actually going to be Super Mario Galaxy More, because at the beginning of development, it was going to be a DLC for Mario Galaxy. Super Mario Galaxy is also the only 3D Mario game at this time to be released on the same console as its predecessor. The level Spinning, Spinning, and Spinning is the exact same level as the Secret of Rico Harbor Tower from Mario Sunshine. An instructional controls DVD manual came with each copy of Super Mario Galaxy 2 in Japan and Europe but not in North America. The level Throwback Galaxy is actually the level Womp's Fortress from Super Mario 64. For a while during development, cameos for other Nintendo franchises like Pikmin and Donkey Kong were supposed to make an appearance in Galaxy 2, but they were ultimately rejected by Miyamoto. In Shiverburn Galaxy, there is a creepy image of aliens out in the distance. This image's file in the code is called Hell Valley Sky Tree. What the hell does that even mean? The Ice Mario and Flying Mario power-ups from Super Mario Galaxy don't appear in Galaxy 2, but are actually in the game's files. When you click 777 or 7777 star bits and talk to the captain, he'll say, How lucky! When you collect 9999 star bits and talk to the captain, he'll say, What happens when you get 9999 star bits? Something nice, I bet. Super Mario 3D Land is actually not the first portable 3D Mario game. It was actually Super Mario 64 DS. In Super Mario 64 DS, you start the game as Yoshi instead of Mario. Every boss in the game has a unique dialogue depending on which character you are currently playing as. 
Even though you can't fight Chief Chili as Yoshi, he still has an unused dialogue pertaining to a fight against him. If you alternate between Mario and Yoshi's drawing in the title screen three times, a drawing of Luigi will appear. The original name for Super Mario 64 DS was actually Super Mario 64 times 4. This was because at one point in development, all four characters could be controlled at once. Luigi is unlocked by beating King Boo in Big Boo's Haunt. This is a reference to the Luigi's Mansion games. When Yoshi eats square crates, he makes cubed eggs. In the Korean version of the game, Toad's Rec Room was completely deleted. This was due to Korea's strict gambling laws. Also in the Korean version of the game, there's a yellow exclamation point block at the top of Peach's castle that'll give the player 100 lives. There was a versus mode in 64DS that let you play against your friends and compete in a star collecting minigame. When using download play, the other players would be different colored Yoshis, exclusive to download play. In December 2011, Nintendo held a promotional event at Times Square for the release of Super Mario 3D Land, where people could experience the world of Mario in real life. Super Mario 3D Land has many references to Super Mario Bros. 3, like the Tanuki suit, Boom Boom, and the airships, just to name a few. Unused audio of the laughing Magikoopa can be found in the game's files. Using the 3DS's microphone, you can actually blow dandelions and collect coins that drop out. PETA created a Flash game called Mario Kills Tanuki, in which Tanuki Mario is chased by a skinless Tanuki. If you wait long enough at the end of level 4-4 and at the beginning of 8-4, a ghost will appear. The level 5-2 is an homage to the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. It is a top-down level in which you can't stomp on enemies, and if you light all the torches, a secret door will appear and play the iconic Zelda sound effect. If you use binoculars in level 1-3 and look up into the sky, you'll see a UFO. The use of the word land in the title is actually a callback to the original Super Mario Land game, which pioneered portable Mario games. If the player reaches the maximum amount of lives, Super Mario will no longer wear a hat, and instead, Small Mario will be wearing a hat. While it's not possible to fly as Tanuki Mario in-game, in the credits, both Mario and Toad seem to be able to fly using Tanuki suits. The Captain Toad level's music in Super Mario 3D World is actually the Toad Brigade theme from Super Mario Galaxy. Once beating Super Mario 3D World, you actually unlock the game Super Luigi Bros as a celebration of the Year of Luigi. The Double Cherry power-up was actually a glitch, but the developers thought it was cool, so they made it into an actual power-up. In the Switch port of Super Mario 3D World, the player actually moves slightly faster and has a cool new dive. The four playable characters in Super Mario 3D World are a callback to Super Mario Bros. 2, and have the same abilities as well. Luigi can jump the highest, Peach has a floaty jump, Toad is the fastest but has a short hop, and Mario is the all-rounder. Gold Star 2, also known as Super Galaxy, is a callback to the game Super Mario Galaxy. In it, you'll find the Comet Observatory and Rosalina, who you will unlock after beating the level. The level Mount Must Dash is a callback to Super Mario Kart on the SNES, and even has a remixed version of the Mario Circuit theme playing. The two Mystery House levels that see you fight enemies are called Mystery House Melee and Mystery House Brawl. This, of course, is a callback to Super Smash Bros. Melee and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. When wearing the Goomba mask, all of your player sound effects will be changed to the Goomba sound effects. The collectible stamps found throughout the levels of Super Mario 3D World could actually be used in the Miiverse post on the Wii U. Sadly, the Miiverse is no longer around, and your stamps can only be found in your stamp collection in-game. The Captain Toad puzzle levels were so popular with the developers that they actually made an entire game out of them called Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. In Super Mario Odyssey, the maximum number of Goombas you can stack is 30. If you look carefully inside the Hint Toad's map, you'll actually see a bird's eye view map of bomb, -Bomb Battlefield from Super Mario 64. The non-capturable NPCs in Super Mario Odyssey wear hats. If you talk to the Toad by the Fountain in Mushroom Kingdom, it'll actually tell you that they were all gifted hats by Peach when she visited the Moon Kingdom. If you go to the Mushroom Kingdom via the painting in Luncheon Kingdom before actually beating the game, you will see that none of the Toads are wearing hats. That's because by that point in the game, Peach hasn't been able to go to the Moon Kingdom to buy all them hats. So, if you were theoretically able to go to the mainland of the Mushroom Kingdom before Peach has had the chance to go to the Moon Kingdom, would you be able to capture a Toad? The Luncheon Kingdom's music was made entirely out of kitchen utensils. There's not just one way to enter the Odyssey. You can enter through the rear exhaust pipe or ground pound through the roof hatch. When collecting a moon, Mario will do one of three hand gestures. 
a peace sign, an open hand, or a closed fist. These are all callbacks to Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy's star slash shine animations, respectively. It is also a good way to play rock, paper, scissors against Mario. Jumping on the globe right outside of the Odyssey will play a music box cover of Jump Up Superstar. While you can technically get 999 moons, most of them will have to be bought from stores since there's only 880 scattered throughout the game. The Moais in the Sand Kingdom actually hum many classic Mario tunes when captured like the Super Mario NES Overworld theme in the Super Mario World Ending theme. If you leave Mario idle for long enough, he'll fall asleep. When in the sleeping animation, a bird will sometimes sleep on his nose, and the color of that bird will always correspond to that kingdom's moon. Bowser's Fury was released alongside the port of Super Mario 3D World and is the only 3D Mario game not to have a standalone release. The four different cat colors that are found throughout Lake Lap Cat resemble each of the playable character's cat suit colors throughout Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario Sunshine's influence can be found throughout the game. The most noticeable of these is the reintroduction of Shines and of course, Bowser Jr. Bowser's Fury is the first mainline Mario game to have Bowser Jr. be playable. When wearing a cat suit, the cat's in Lake Lap Cat and nuzzle up against you. The Bowser amiibo can be used to summon Fury Bowser whenever you please. You can actually attack Bowser using the spikes he shoots out. The entirety of Bowser's Fury takes place in one big open level. This makes Lake Lap Cat the biggest level in the entire Mario series. Mario uses the same animation for collecting moons in Odyssey when collecting cat shines in Bowser's Fury. After 100%ing the game, the cat suit gets a texture redesign to match the look of the Giga Cat Bell Power Up. After 100%ing the game, Bowser Jr. wears whiskers and cat ears. Super Mario 3D All-Stars was an anniversary compilation of the first three 3D Mario games released on September 18, 2020. It was only available for 194 days and was removed from stores and the Nintendo eShop on March 31, 2021. No one knows for sure why Nintendo did this. Maybe it was corporate greed, maybe they thought it would make the game more special. <sighs> the world may never know, but in my opinion, I just think Nintendo's dumb. In Donkey Kong's official artwork for Smash 64, the DK letters are flipped on his tie. The expectations for Smash Brothers were low, and Nintendo had no intentions of localizing it for an international release. But after success in Japan, Nintendo decided to release it worldwide. Charles Martinet's name was misspelled in Smash 64's credits. The prototype for Smash 64 was called Dragon King The Fighting Game. The prototype fighters would later go on to become Captain Falcon. All characters except for Captain Falcon use their head as their stock icon. Captain Falcon uses a falcon. Although Pikachu is the best character in Smash 64, he was actually even better in the Japanese version, being nerfed for international releases. When announcing Metal Mario, the announcer's voice has a metallic effect. A poll was run in Japan shortly after the release of Smash 64 asking fans what characters they'd like to see appear in future games. Of the top 10, 7 have made it into future games. The three characters from the poll yet to have been added are Toad, Mew, and uh, James Bond. Yeah, I don't see that happening. In the Japanese version of Smash 64, the fighting polygon team is actually called the Dummy Corps. The only characters in Smash 64 without a stage based on their series are Captain Falcon and Ness. In an early version of Smash 64, Saffron City's roof was pink and purple. In Smash 64 and Melee, Luigi's dash attack's final hit does no knockback. 64's fighters are placed in chronological order from oldest to newest, with Mario and Donkey Kong being the oldest and Pikachu being the newest. The unlockable characters were added very close to the end of development, leading many of their animations and moves to be quite similar to other fighters. There is a draw game sound effect in the files of Smash 64, leading some to assume Sun Death wasn't added until very late in development. In Mushroom Kingdom stage, there's actually a danger sign on the left and right sides of the castle warning the players of the stage's boundaries. This was also the case in Melee. Yoshi only has four selectable costumes in 64 but two more can actually be seen in single-player mode. Samus and Jigglypuff are the only female fighters in Smash 64. Only 12 characters have appeared in all five games. These are Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, 
Samus, Yoshi, Kirby, Fox, Pikachu, Luigi, Ness, Captain Falcon, and Jigglypuff. They're called the original 12. Mushroom Kingdom is the only unlockable stage in Smash 64. In Melee, there's a glitch that allows you to play as Master Hand. It involves plugging your controller into port 3 and then doing a glitch to bypass the stage selection screen to go straight into the game. All players that have not chosen a fighter will automatically be set to Master Hand, and he's only playable through port 3. The game will eventually crash, but it's super fun to mess around with this and control Master Hand. By pressing X, Y, or B on your controller before the result screen appears in Melee, you can actually choose which victory animation your character does. The original Melee box art did not include Link or Pikachu. It was just Mario and Bowser. There's a battle bonus called Switzerland, where all you need to do is not attack or get attacked. Marth and Roy were originally just going to be Japanese exclusive fighters in Melee, but were added in to promote Fire Emblem's release in the West. Smash Bros. Melee actually came out before Roy's debut in Fire Emblem The Blinding Blade, which means Roy is the first and only character to debut in a Smash game. Smash Bros. Melee was the last game in the series to be made by HAL Laboratories before Sakurai's departure in 2003. By performing a short down taunt on a Star Fox stage while using a Star Fox character, a secret conversation taunt will appear that will be different for every single character in the game. In it, multiple Star Fox characters enter the call to talk about the player's opponent. A similar easter egg is also there for Snake and Pit from Metal Gear Solid and Kid Icarus, respectively. Ditto was supposed to be in Melee, but was taken out at the end of development. Luigi's side B attack is called the Green Missile, and has an even more powerful attack called a Misfire. The chance of the Misfire occurring anytime you use the attack is a 1 in 8 chance in Melee and Brawl, and a 1 in 10 chance in Smash 4 and Ultimate. Daisy's trophy in Melee has a random floating third eye on the side of her head. Sakurai's wife, Michiko Sakurai, designed the menus for most of the games in the series. Luigi's voice is just Mario's voice pitched up. Smash Melee was developed in just 13 months, so many ideas and features were left out due to time constraints. Wario, Snake, and Sonic were all considered for Melee, but were ultimately not included due to these time constraints. A-Player Smash was also thought of, but was not included due to hardware limitations. Mr. Game & Watch actually breaks All-Star Mode. By spamming the hammer move and hoping for a 7 in the rest area, you can actually get some food which will be able to heal Game & Watch. Given the rest area has no time limit and you can spam side B until your heart's desire, it's possible to fully heal yourself before every battle in All-Star Mode, something that was definitely not intended and was fixed in Smash Bros. Brawl. The Samus Trophy says her first appearance was in 1989, but Metroid on the NES first launched in Japan three years earlier in 1986. In the Spanish version of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, there's a text line that says weaklings should stay home and play Super Smash Bros. Melee. Super Smash Bros. Melee was the first game many of the characters appeared in a teen-rated game. The announcer for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Pat Cashman, was also the announcer for Bill Nye the Science Guy. If you zoom into Pokemon Stadium during the ice transformation and look inside this little hut, you can see a picture of Sakurai's cat. Seven characters have incomplete files in the code of Smash Bros. Brawl, leaving many to assume they were intended to be in the game at some point but were ultimately cut. They were dubbed by the community, the Forbidden Seven. These characters included Roy, Mewtwo, and Dr. Mario, who were characters from Melee, and Dixie Kong, Toon Zelda, Toon Sheik, and Plus Old Minin as supposed newcomers. The characters from Melee would eventually all return for Smash 4, while the newcomers would never make the cut. I guess everyone isn't here after all. Wolf, Toon Link, and Jigglypuff do not appear in Subspace Emissary because they were almost cut from the final game's roster and didn't have time to put them into the plot. This is also why Sonic appears at the very end, because he was also added very late in development. In Brawl, there's a feature called Masterpieces, which lets you play demos from across Nintendo's library. Every game would have a set time limit you could play before kicking you out. Players took this as a challenge to try and beat the games, and even speedrun them. The most famous of them all is the Ocarina of Time Brawl Masterpiece speedrun, which uses so many unfathomable glitches that you just have to see it to believe it. There's an unused fighter select screen within Brawl called Slip Space, which would have been used to play Wi-Fi battles with anyone across the internet. The permit's face changes every time you boot into Subspace Emissary. 
The Pikachu from Brawl might actually be the Pichu from Melee. Let me explain. In Brawl, Pikachu's final smash is Volt Tackle, which might not sound weird at first, but when you take into account that Pikachus can only learn Volt Tackle as a Pichu, and the Pikachu in Brawl also wears the goggles the Pichu in Melee had, I think there's a very high possibility that this might actually be true. Sakurai acted out the Subspace Emissary cutscenes to show animators exactly what he wanted them to look like. There's an unused teal Luigi costume in Brawl's files. In Melee and Brawl, you can move around the screen in the menus by tilting the C-Stick. Brawl, unlike the other games, went for more of a realistic aesthetic when making the game, going for less colorful yet more detailed textures. The longest work of English literature is a subspace emissary fanfiction that comes in at a total of 4 million plus words. The Mario Circuit stage is actually fully modeled out even though you can only see it from a certain angle. Sakurai actually denied Villager's inclusion in Brawl because he thought he wasn't suited for battle. Sakurai was really upset that Subspace Emissary's cutscenes ended up being re-uploaded to the internet, and so Adventure Mode was not made for Smash 4. If you dash in Brawl, there's a 1% chance you'll trip. Iwata announced a new Smash game on the Wii without even asking Sakurai if he would direct it. After the announcement, Iwata talked to him personally and asked Sakurai if he'd direct the game. And if Sakurai refused, they would just port Melee with online capabilities. You can actually destroy Fox and Falco's Landmaster, but it's extremely hard to do. Ice Climbers were cut from Smash 4 due to hardware limitations with the 3DS. If you bought both Smash for Wii U and 3DS during a three-month window after the game's release and had a Club Nintendo account, you would get a free Smash soundtrack CD featuring 36 songs from both games. You would also get Mewtwo's DLC for free. Smash for Wii U is the only game in which Jigglypuff is unlocked from the start. There's an unused character file on the Smash for Wii U disc called Rhythm. Some people think that this means a Rhythm Fever character might have actually been in development but was scratched at some point, but that's just all speculation. Each fighter has a unique nickname that displays on the Jumbotron of the Boxing Ring stage. Some of my favorites are the BMI Bandit, the Ramen Bomber, and Scoundrel with a Fart of Gold. If you didn't recognize some of these, that's because many were actually changed for PAL regions to fit how those countries view them. If you listen to the Master Core theme and wait through the 1 minute and 53 seconds of silence, you'll hear Morse code which translates to Master Core. Toon Link is usually the only one driving the Spirit Train stage on the 3DS, but when someone is actually fighting as Toon Link, the driver changes to Alfonso. Smash 4 and Ultimate's result screen uses the character select theme from Smash 64. In Smash 3DS, there's actually a glitch that can get you the Big Yoshi. All you gotta do is go to the Multi-Man Smash and fight the Big Yoshi as Yoshi. If you eat him, he'll grow a little bigger. If you eat him again, he'll grow even bigger. And if you eat him again, he'll grow even bigger. This goes on and on and on to the point where it'll become so big that it'll just touch the boundaries of the stage and die. After collecting every Mii outfit in Smash 4, you'll get a notification saying, Collected every type of custom outfit. My body is ready. This is a reference to Reggie's iconic Wii Fit quote. Body, my body is ready. <laughs> Jigglypuff was actually shiny in the first three games, having green eyes instead of blue. In 2015, Nintendo ran a Smash ballot that allowed players to vote which characters they'd like to see come to Smash. The winner of the ballot was Bayonetta, and she was promptly added to Smash. Well, sort of. You see, the real winner was revealed to actually be Sora in the final Smash reveal in October 2021. Supposedly, Nintendo didn't want to reveal the true winner of the ballot back in 2015, so fans wouldn't get mad at the companies of the true winners. Smash 4 was the first and only game to include custom moves. Amiibos were announced alongside the release of Smash 4. Because of the low stocking of certain characters, it became extremely popular to not only collect them, but scalp them. This definitely cooled down in later waves and releases, but the Amiibo mania sure was in full swing for a couple months. Orbital Gate Assault took over a year to make. If Lil Mac obtains 100 damage, bruises and tape will appear on his face. Smash for Wii U released in Japan on Satoru Iwata's 55th birthday. There are over 82 fighters in Smash Ultimate, but if you include all the Echo Fighters in the count, there's actually 88. Yoshi's new Final Smash in Ultimate, Yoshi Stampede, is actually a callback to this shot from Melee's opening cutscene. Luigi, Greninja, and Kazuya are the only characters in the game to have a taunt that can deal damage. While looking like a 2D sprite, Mr. Game & Watch actually has a 3D model. 
Because of this, a shot from the Z-axis in Sephiroth's final smash shows him from this hideous 3D form. Min Min was chosen as the ARMS representative because the ARMS producer Kusuke Yubuki personally requested she be added in. The Sheikah text on the Great Plateau stage translates to Smash Bros. Smash Ultimate is the only game in the series to build off its predecessor's mechanics, rather than just starting from scratch. This decision was made so they wouldn't have to cut any character due to time constraints, and so they could focus on other aspects of the game. Inkling takes damage when they're in water, just like how they do in Splatoon. This is also the case for Charizard, Incineroar, and Sonic. The Minecraft World soundtrack is taken from the spin-off's Minecraft Dungeons and Art, because the devs thought the ambient music from Minecraft was too relaxing for a fighting game. Smash Ultimate's soundtrack has 1,068 tracks, and clocks in at a total of 28 hours. Nintendo actually leaked the Stage Builder update for Smash Bros. Ultimate a day before it dropped, because it appeared in the background of the commercial. Snake's series logo is changed from the exclamation point logo from the Fox logo in Brawl to avoid any issues with Kojima Productions. Ultimate's character selection starts with just the original 8 from Smash 64. Cappy appears in Mario's side taunt, as well as his up special. In Ultimate, you actually pick the stage you'll be playing on first, and then pick the character, unlike the other games in which it's reversed. Kirby was the only one not taken out by Galeem at the beginning of World of Light. You start out as him and have to unlock new characters throughout the game. It's theorized that Kirby was chosen as the starting fighter of World of Light because he was created by Sakurai. The Animal Crossing stage's time of day is based on the time set on your Switch. In the Japanese version of Animal Crossing for the GameCube, you could get into Nook's cranny after hours by hitting the door with the shovel a couple times. When inside, you'll see Tom Nook wearing his PJs. Katsuya Aguchi, the director of Animal Crossing, got the inspiration for the game from moving to Kyoto when he was just 21. He felt lonely yet inspired by this change, and wanted to make a game that captured the feelings of friendship and community. On New Year's Eve in City Folk, you'll receive a shirt with that year's Chinese Zodiac. Interestingly enough, there are shirts for 2000 through 2008 that are in the files, but aren't actually unlockable without manually changing the internal clock to go back in time. In Animal Crossing population growing, the only way to unlock Mario Bros and Ice Climbers is by scanning the respective e-reader cards. There's an Animal Crossing movie. It came out in 2006 and only released in Japan. In 2003's annual Nintendo Power Awards, fans voted in Tom Nook as a top villain, most likely due to the high amounts of debt he collects from players. While fans might be under the impression that Tom Nook is a greedy debt collector, in Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, he shares with the player that 90% of his revenue is donated to an orphanage. If you input an invalid song request to KK Slider, he will play one of three secret songs. One of them from New Horizons is Animal City, which is a remix of the Wild World theme. The villagers Reese and Cyrus were given their names as when combined, they sound like Recycle. The villager Audi in New Horizons is a neat tribute to a 90-year-old grandma who played over 3,500 hours of Animal Crossing New Leaf on her 3DS. The new Nintendo 3DS was the only 3DS console to have Amiibo functionality, so Nintendo released an Amiibo peripheral that used Bluetooth, allowing players with older 3DS hardware to scan Amiibo into their Animal Crossing games as well. In the Japanese version of the original Animal Crossing game, all player characters had black eyes. When a player catches a squid in New Horizons, the message will say, Off the Hook, a reference to the Splatoon series. There were several pieces of Nintendo-themed furniture in Animal Crossing New Leaf. The way you could obtain these items was by purchasing Tom Nook's fortune cookies using play coins, which you could earn by physically walking with your 3DS. You could unlock NES games in the original Animal Crossing. Two of them are in the code, but could never actually be unlocked without hacking. Those two, of course, were Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp was the fourth mobile game Nintendo ever released. You can wish upon a star by looking up into the sky and pressing A. In New Horizons, this will cause star fragments to show up on the shore the next morning. The most expensive item you can purchase in New Horizons is the Royal Crown, which is 1.2 million bells. In Animal Crossing New Horizons' first week, it sold over 13 million copies, which is more than every other game in the series did in its entire shelf life. Interestingly enough, the original Animal Crossing game allowed you to have the most villagers being 15. Wild World and New Horizons, on the other hand, had the least number of villagers being 8. If you watch your TV at 3.33 AM in Animal Crossing New Leaf on a Sunday or Monday, a creepy alien message will appear. 
Animal Crossing was originally a Nintendo 64 game called Animal Forest, an exclusive to Japan. When the GameCube launched, they ported it to the system under the subtitle Animal Crossing Population Growing. The TVs in Animal Crossing New Horizons have a complete 24-hour schedule, with different shows, commercials, and news sprinkled in. There is a fishing minigame in WarioWare Smooth Moves that is set in Animal Crossing. Red's store theme is just Nook's Cranny at a different pitch. The best way to earn bells in Animal Crossing New Horizons is to simply multiply your cash flow by buying and selling turnip stocks. However, because the rate of exchange for turnips is varied by island, fans on the internet created an entire stock exchange where players would advertise Daisy May's low sales prices or the Nook Brothers' high buying price on the island so other villagers could visit and benefit from the same rates. Jeremiah the Bullfrog is a reference to the Three Dog Night song, Joy to the World. If you throw an axe in the fountain of Animal Crossing City Folk, Serena will appear and ask you questions. The questions are a bit weird, but if you happen to get them all right, she'll give you the golden axe. Animal Crossing New Horizons was announced alongside the reveal of Isabel joining the Smash Brothers roster. Mr. Rossetti was added to discourage players from resetting their game to get better items in Nook's Cranny. KK Slider is the most popular Animal Crossing character, according to the fan poll. The Harabuna fish was an exclusive to the Animal Forest game on the N64. All special characters such as Isabel, Brewster, Leaf, and more are species that no other villager is. Exceptions only occur if they're related, such as the Able Sisters or Blathers and Celeste. Although, Timmy and Tommy aren't related to Tom Nook, they're actually just his apprentices. Isabel's birthday falls on National Sangria Day. You can scare away wasps with party poppers. Hugh and Raymond are the only villagers with heterochromia, which means each of their eyes are a different color. Animal Crossing is the first game since the original GameCube game not to include AK Slider on the box art. In Animal Crossing, gyroids cost 828 bells. It seems like a random number, but actually in Japanese, 828 sounds like the word Haniwa, which are what gyroids were originally based on. KK Slider is based on the composer of the game, Kazumi Totaka. 56% of Animal Crossing New Leaf's pre-orders came from the female audience, even though they only made up 31% of the 3DS users. To acquire the golden net and fishing rod, you'll need to collect all the bugs and fish respectfully. Animal Crossing New Horizons is the second best-selling game on the Switch, at 39 million units. In every Animal Crossing game, there is a rock that can be hit every day for a few extra bells. New days in Animal Crossing start at 6am, and the game will send you back to your house at the beginning of a new day. You can bury bells in a glowy spot, and it'll grow to become a money tree, which will triple your bells. Animal Crossing actually released a series of interactable game cards long before Amiibo back in 2002 for the e-reader, which worked with the Game Boy Advance. There were 326 total cards released under the name Animal Crossing E. Animal Crossing Wild World and City Folk share the same main theme. Dipper T. Bunny is actually a villager wearing a costume, yet no one knows their true identity. In the Spanish versions of the Animal Crossing games, Lather's name is Socrates, which is a reference to the Greek philosopher Socrates. If you collect all of Whis pieces and then refuse to give them to him, you'll actually get stuck in a text loop which can only end with you giving him the pieces. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival was a board game for Nintendo Wii consoles. I wrote this as board game in the script because it's boring as heck, and is deservedly the lowest rated Animal Crossing game across the board, getting a 46 on Metacritic. This was actually not the only Animal Crossing game on the Wii U, however, as the often forgotten Animal Crossing Plaza released on August 7th, 2013, and discontinued in December of 2014. It was a New Leaf Miiverse tie-in that allowed players to post New Leaf screenshots to the Miiverse. In the original Animal Crossing for Nintendo GameCube, if you clean Gracie's cars a certain number of times and then talk to her, she'll exclaim, How did you know my name was Gretchen Grunch? However, this reference to her real name is never mentioned in any other game in the series. The amiibo card for Marshall, at the height of New Horizons' popularity, was being scalped and consistently resold for over $100. Brewster can be befriended. Him and Sable are the only special characters that can do this. You can do a front flip off the dock. Hot chocolate is only available at the Roost on Valentine's Day. Gulliver the Traveling Seagull's name is a reference to the book Gulliver's Travels. 
an Animal Crossing population growing if you were to visit another town and then reset before going back to your own town, you'd have a gyroid face when the game booted up again. Along with the release of Animal Crossing New Leaf Welcome Amiibo, Nintendo added new villagers from Splatoon and Zelda, as well as Sanrio characters. They could only join your town if you scanned in their Amiibo card. Gulliver references his travels to Isle Delfino in New Leaf. Orville and Wilbur the Dodo Birds are the only extinct animals in the game. The calm, common, dynamic, and flowery painting can never be counterfeit. Isabel's Japanese name is Shitsu, which sounds similar to Shitsu, the type of dog that she is. Some of Red's fake paintings are actually haunted. This one's eyes move. Mr. Rossetti has a brother, Don Rossetti, who appears the fifth time you forget to reset in Animal Crossing GameCube. In one of Donkey Kong's idle animations for Tropical Freeze, he'll pull out a 3DS XL and begin playing Animal Crossing. If you shoot down the weekly UFO in Animal Crossing Wild World, you'll find that Gulliver was actually inside it. He refers to a ship as the Porpoise 5000, which is most likely a reference to Olimar's ship from Pikmin. KK Slider is the only naked villager. Animal Crossing New Leaf starts on the train with Rover, just like how the original Animal Crossing starts. Rover even says he hasn't been on the train since 2002. Luna is based on the mythological Baku, which are said to eat people's nightmares. If a male character wears feminine clothing in New Leaf, the running animation will also change to be feminine. Tom Nook's birthday is May 30th. In Animal Crossing, the rarest fish by far has got to be the coelacanth, which can only be caught in the ocean while it's either raining or snowing. In the GameCube version, it can only be encountered once per play session, meaning if you encountered it and missed, you would have to reset your system before you'd be able to spawn it again. The main draw of Animal Crossing is that it's set in real time and progresses at the same speed whether or not you're playing the game, unless you're a dirty time traveler. In that case, I have no respect for you. Animal Crossing for the GameCube is a direct port of Animal Forest from the N64. As a result, the game takes up very little space on the disc, and when the game is put in, the entire game is loaded onto the GameCube's RAM, so therefore you can take the disc out and continue to play the game as normal. Although Nook's Cranny and Able Sister stores are placed randomly on the town map in Wild World, they will always be placed next to each other. Ramses is named after the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses. Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer is actually the first Animal Crossing game to use Amiibo support, releasing even before Amiibo Festival, and it used the Animal Crossing Amiibo cards. Animal Force is one of only 14 N64 games that were made available in China via the IQ player. If you start Animal Crossing New Leaf on April Fool's Day, Blanco will actually greet you on the train instead of Rover. If you reset the GameCube Animal Crossing game too many times, Mr. Rossetti will have enough and delete all of your progress. Well, at least he tricks you into thinking he does, but that would sure scare me into never resetting again. The airport's colors determine the types of items that will appear on the Nook Stop Terminal. The Leaf logo is based on the Japanese legend that Tanukis are able to turn leaves into money. Animal Crossing City Folk is the only game Nintendo developed that used the Wii Speak microphone accessory. Harvey and Lloyd are the only NPCs from Animal Crossing New Leaf that don't have amiibo cards. Kappa is based on Japanese folklore creatures, Kappas. Kappas are known to kidnap children, so make sure to keep that in mind the next time he invites you to his island. But in the Roost update for Animal Crossing New Horizons, he makes his first appearance in the presence of other villagers. The Abel sisters' parents died when they were young, and Sable did her best to raise her sisters Label and Mabel. You can actually get Sable to open up to you if you make sure to talk to her every single day. Frog villagers don't hold an umbrella when it rains. Animal Crossing characters speak animalese, which is a simplified and sped up version of English. Animal Crossing New Horizons is the highest rated Animal Crossing game on Metacritic, being 90%. Amiibo Festival is all the way down at 40%. Wild World was the first game to introduce reactions. The Legend of Zelda NES in Japan is called the Hyrule Fantasy. Ocarina of Time's engine is a modified version of Super Mario 64. The classic series of Zelda cartridges are actually gray instead of gold. The only game in the main series of games that does not feature Zelda is Link's Awakening. The only Zelda game starring Link without Zelda in the title made by Nintendo is Link's Crossbow Training. 
Originally, The Legend of Zelda's main theme was going to be the song Bolero by Maurice Ravel, but after running into copyright issues, Nintendo desperately needed a new theme ready for the game's release. So Koji Kondo pulled an all-nighter and made one of the best video game themes of all time. Koji Kondo also remixed Super Mario Bros. 3's Waterland theme and turned it into the iconic Fairy Fountain theme. The Legend of Zelda's timeline is split into three paths. They all spawn from the ending of Ocarina of Time. The Fallen Hero timeline, the Child timeline, and the Adult timeline. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom come after all of these timelines with no specific connection to all three. Skyward Sword, according to the Hyrule Historia, is the very first game in the chronological timeline. Ironically, Zelda 1 and Zelda 2 are some of the latest games down the timeline. Nintendo's new rewards program ended up launching alongside its own Zelda game, being My Nintendo Picross The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, which was only accessible to My Nintendo members. Retro Studios apparently worked on a Sheik-centered game. However, the gameplay was apparently so bad that Nintendo shut down the project the moment it was presented to them. Miyamoto went on to say that if Retro Studios was to ever work with the Zelda franchise again, he would have to heavily overlook the progress. Nobuki Hiyama was the Japanese voice actor for Link in Super Smash Bros. 64 in Melee, and he actually returned as the voice actor for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. However, instead of voicing Link, he returned because he was also the voice actor for the hero variant from Dragon Quest 3. While many have come to love the shell-shaded style of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, the initial reveal disappointed many fans, and this is likely because Nintendo had shown off a more realistic Zelda tech demo years prior. Funnily enough, Nintendo showed off another realistic looking Zelda tech demo for the Wii U, only to once again release another game with shell shaded graphics. According to Eiji Numa, Miyamoto literally cringed when even he was presented with Wind Waker's art style. Not only was The Legend of Zelda revolutionary for its genre, but it was also the first game ever to have a battery pack save feature, which saved your progress on the cartridge itself. Likely because they share the same creator, the amount of references to Mario in Zelda games is insane. While there are many characters across the games that resemble Mario, the most blatant cameos come from Link's Awakening, which reuses several enemies from the Mario series. You can even collect figurines from these enemies. The name of the frog in Link's Awakening who teaches you the Song of the Soul is Mamu. However, he looks awfully similar to Wart from Super Mario Bros. 2. That's because Mamu is his name in Doki Doki Panic before it was rebranded as a Mario title. Link's Awakening also has a photograph of Princess Peach. Nah, I'm kidding. This photograph is attached to the letter from Christine, who just so happens to look identical to a certain princess from the Mushroom Kingdom. There are more Link amiibo figures than any other amiibo. In Mario Kart 8, Link was the first character to be added that wasn't a Mario character. However, he's not the first character to do this in a mainline Mario Kart game, as Rob was added to Mario Kart DS 10 years earlier. Link's Breath of the Wild costume in the Master Cycle Zero are the only new character models and car parts to be added to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe since its release. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has official artwork that features Link completely naked. This can be seen in the art book, The Legend of Zelda Creating a Champion. Breath of the Wild had a prototype made for it where its layouts were converted into an entirely 2D 8-bit game. The first Zelda game was remade for the Super Nintendo as a 16-bit game, and it was called BS The Legend of Zelda. BS stood for Broadcast Satellite, as it was only available to you if you had a Satellaview peripheral, which was unfortunately exclusive to Japanese systems. Link is typically left-handed, but he predominantly uses his right hand in Skyward Sword and Link's crossbow training, as these games were heavily focused on motion controls via the Wiimo. The only member of Link's immediate family we ever see is Ariel, his sister from Wind Waker. However, we do see some members of his extended family, such as his uncle from Link to the Past and his grandmother. The developers of Hyrule Warriors initially scrapped Linkle, the female version of Link, as Aonuma believed that she would be confused for Link's sister from Wind Waker. The developers decided to add her as DLC as many fans expressed interest in this character after seeing sketches that were included in the Hyrule Warriors art book. However, she is not a canon character. When Breath of the Wild showcased its first trailer, many fans thought the new version of Link was actually a girl because of his long hair, ponytail, and earrings. Aonuma went on to reaffirm that this version of Link was in fact male, but this was also an intentional design choice to make the character more relatable to a wider audience. Link is iconic for never speaking out loud in his games. 
However, he does say a few lines across the series. The first mainline Zelda game he spoke in was Wind Waker, where he can be heard yelling. Technically, the first Zelda game Link spoke in was Link the Faces of Evil for the Philips CDI, but this is definitely not canon. Gee, it sure is boring around here. How about a kiss for luck? You've got to be kidding. While the Philips CDI Zelda trilogy is not canon, Nintendo intentionally gave Philips the licensing to make these games. They did this to get out of an agreement they had made to create a peripheral to the NES together. While Smash Ultimate's entirely sent around every fighter returning, Link might just be the only one that didn't. Using Palutena's guidance, she'll explain to Pit that this is a different Link from the one in previous entries, referring to him as the hero of the Wild Incarnation. I can't put my finger on it, but Link seems different somehow. Well, this Link is technically a different person from the Link you fought before. This incarnation is known as the Hero of the Wild. While the Game Boy effectively killed the Game & Watch series, Nintendo ended up releasing a Zelda Game & Watch just four months after the Game Boy released. The last Game & Watch ever released was not that long ago, as this was actually the 35th anniversary Zelda Edition Game & Watch. The flute sound effect from the original Legend of Zelda is most iconic for its remixed version in Ocarina of Time's intro. This tune was also borrowed for Super Mario Bros. 3 Warp Whistle sound effect. While many people know that Link's design was inspired by Peter Pan, Navi might just be inspired by Tinkerbell. In an interview, Shigeru Miyamoto said that Navi is jealous of Zelda because she feels something for Link, which sounds vaguely familiar. The Legend of Zelda TV series was a 13-episode cartoon, and it was tied to the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, and each episode would have a live-action segment featuring the Mario Bros. Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link often never gets talked about, and Miyamoto seems to know why, as he referred to it as the only Zelda game in which he considers to be a failure, and he attributed its failure to hardware limitations. Miyamoto may have felt this way about Skyward Sword for a bit as well, given he got to experience secondhand embarrassment at E3 2010 when the game's motion controls refused to function properly during his live presentation for the game. Soda Popinski's laugh from Punch-Out is the same sound effect used by Ganon when he laughs at you during Zelda 2's Game Over screen. Palutena's reveal for Smash 4 left many fans hoping for a Zelda anime, and while we have yet to see one yet, there is a Zelda manga series with 10 entries, each referencing a different Zelda game. Nintendo developed a hard mode for Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64 disk drive, but this didn't release because the failure of the 64 DD, and the game was later ported to the GameCube as Master Quest. When Reggie fils was a guest on CBS This Morning after the launch of Breath of the Wild, he was asked about Link's appearance, in which he simply replied, Link is hot. And Breath of the Wild's developers intentionally designed the game to allow players to encounter Ganon very early into the story, giving the players a chance to play at any pace they want. Some players have managed to even beat Ganon with just three hearts. If you own a 3DS and a Wii U, you can actually play every single mainline Zelda game to date. Link's trusty steed from throughout the Zelda series is named after the Celtic goddess of horses, Epona. While Link is mostly known for riding horses, he can actually be seen riding several unconventional animals, like a flying bear, a kangaroo, and a lizard, being Moosh, Ricky, and Dimitri from Oracle of Seasons and Ages games. While the dubious food from Breath of the Wild appears to be so grotesque that its name in Japan simply translates to lackluster cuisine. The Zelda games from the NES stand out for their golden cartridges. The only other game on the NES with a cartridge like this is the 1990 Nintendo World Championships Gold Cartridge. Only 26 of these even exist, because they were given out as part of a Nintendo Power sweepstakes. The first character encountered in the first Zelda game gives Link several different swords throughout his adventure, and is simply titled Old Man. Similarly, you encounter an old man at the beginning of Breath of the Wild, who is later revealed to be the King of Hyrule, meaning all the way back in the first game, you may have just been receiving aid from the king the whole time. The hero spirit from Twilight Princess who trains Link and teaches him his hidden skills is actually the spirit of Link from Ocarina of Time in Wind Waker, being the hero of time. The most expensive Zelda game to play might just be Four Swords Adventures, because it required a Game Boy Advance and a Link cable for each player, alongside a GameCube and the game itself. On the DSi and the 3DS, however, it's the cheapest game, and it was made available for free in 2011. While Triforce Heroes was a spiritual successor to Four Swords Adventures, Purple Link was cut from the game to keep it limited to three players. However, just outside the castle, you can come across a Link-shaped figure that's described as a broken forgotten doll, which is likely a reference to the fallen Purple. 
Zelda Breath of the Wild is Nintendo's only game ever to win Game of the Year. The happy mask salesman from Majora's Mask seems to have collected himself a few Nintendo references, including the Keaton mask, which bears similarity to Pikachu and another mask that clearly resembles Mario. The name Link was chosen to refer to his connection to the Triforce fragments, which were originally computer chips. The Legend of Zelda has its own official rap song. It's quite corny, but it was used in the 1980s commercial for the NES title. You haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. When creating The Legend of Zelda, Miyamoto was heavily inspired by his time as a child adventuring around the countryside. He wanted to create the childlike wonder in a video game. Zelda was named after F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife. Robin Williams' daughter was named after The Legend of Zelda. They even both appeared in a commercial for the 3D remake of Ocarina of Time, where Robin Williams describes why he named her Zelda. The only enemy to appear in every mainline Zelda game is the Staphlo skeleton. The dungeons fit together like puzzle pieces to save space for the NES cartridge. Naming yourself Zelda lets you start the second quest immediately. The L is real graphic from Super Mario 64 is used in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time's Dodongo's Cavern. When downloading a rune in Breath of the Wild, the Sheikah text will flow down onto your Sheikah slate. The text translates to, now loading, do not turn off your, and, all your base are, a reference to the localization flub from Zero Wing. During the development of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the developers considered having Link travel across worlds through the paintings just like in Super Mario 64. Inside the castle, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, you can actually find paintings referencing the Super Mario franchise. While Tetra is later revealed to be Princess Zelda in Wind Waker, the two are essentially two entirely different personas. In fact, Tetra is not even aware that she's Zelda, as she claims she's never even heard of Zelda before. The Tears of the Kingdom title and release date were shown off on the September 13th, 2022 Nintendo Direct. That Direct wasn't streamed live to UK audiences due to the mourning period of Queen Elizabeth II's death. Some speculate that it was actually not streamed because of the game's title being, well, Tears of the Kingdom. Breath of the Wild was the first game in the series to have weapons break. Link's experience with fighting games extends beyond Smash. He was actually a playable character in Soul Calibur 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. The rock wall in Ocarina of Time has hidden constellations based on real-life constellations. Zelda Twilight Princess was mirrored when ported to the Wii. Link was left-handed on the GameCube version and right-handed on the Wii. Link's Awakening was originally going to be a handheld port of A Link to the Past. The side character Tingle has two games of his own series, being freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land and its sequel, Ripen Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love. The first game only released in Japan and Europe, and the second never released outside of Japan. Nintendo also released a game that was exclusive to the Japanese Club Nintendo service called Tingle's Balloon Fight DS, which was a reskin of the NES game Balloon Fight featuring Tingle. By collecting all 900 Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild, you'll receive Hetsu's Gift, which is described as smelly and looks like this. The Rock Mushroom power-up from Super Mario 64 was inspired from the Goron's ability from Zelda Majora's Mask. You can actually see two Impas in Cadence of Hyrule by playing as her in the game's co-op mode. The other Impa will appear in Zelda's quarters while you are using her. This theme playing now from The Link to the Past was a remixed version of Super Mario Bros. 2 boss theme. Hyrule Circuit is only one of two circuit tracks found across the Mario Kart series without a character referenced in the name. The other is the Figure 8 Circuit. Link to the Past has the most dungeons out of any other game in the series being 13. Unless you count shrines. In that case, Breath of the Wild has the most with 120. The game with the least amount of dungeons is Majora's Mask with only 4. Even though Skyward Sword was made for the Wii, it's formatted for 16x9 screens. Twilight Princess is the only game in the series not to feature Octoroks. Each piece of the Triforce is linked to one of Link, Zelda, and Ganon. Link has the Triforce of Courage, Zelda has the Triforce of Wisdom, and Ganon has the Triforce of Power. Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link is the only side-scrolling game in the series. A modified version of Link to the Past was downloadable via the Satellaview for the Super Famicom in Japan. It was actually re-released in the Nintendo Switch Online service. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons are companion games that were released on the same day, but they aren't identical like the way Pokemon games are released. 
Instead, each game is its own unique campaign, and the other game can be played as a sequel once the first game is completed. You will be given a code that you can plug into the inverse game which will make that game act as a sequel. The Oracle games were known as the Triforce series in Japan, with each game being based on one part of the Triforce. Mystical Seed of Power was the Oracle of Seasons, Mystical Seed of Wisdom was the Oracle of Ages, and the Mystical Seed of Courage was cancelled and therefore never released overseas. Or any seas for that matter, because the game was never finished. The best selling game in the series is Breath of the Wild, and the least selling game in the series is Four Swords Adventures, which is so unfortunate because I love the crazy concept Nintendo made for this game. The original logo for the Minish Cap included the Master Sword, but it was replaced when it was decided that the Master Sword would not appear in the game. The Minish Cap is also the only game in the series to include a sound test feature. Link's voice in Triforce Heroes is randomly selected at the beginning of the game from either Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Spirit Tracks, or A Link Between Worlds. The Legend of Zelda came with a player manual with a blank map that let players draw out the underground layout so they could keep track of the dungeons. Kirby and Dreamland's title screen was drastically changed in the international releases to accommodate the longer title. Kirby's Air Ride was originally going to be called Kirby Bowl 64 and release on the N64. In the very first level of Kirby in the Forgotten Land, called Point of Arrival, you can hear birds chirping along with other ambient noises. But if you pay close attention, you'll hear the birds are actually chirping the grasslands theme. Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Birdo are visible in the stands of the Spring Breeze battle with King DDD and Kirby Superstar. Kirby's Adventure is by far the largest NES game coming in at a whopping 6 megabits. The first letter of each world in Kirby's Adventure spells out Vib G Yor, which, if you haven't guessed, is Roy G Biv spelled backwards. If Kirby uses the fighter ability in Planet Robobot and presses the Street Fighter inputs for a Hadouken, Kirby will do a charged version of his attack. Kirby's Dream Course and Earthbound share many sound effects. This is because they are both developed by HAL Laboratories around the same time. The title of the 3DS game Kirby's Triple Deluxe is a play on 3D, triple being the 3 and deluxe being the D. Kirby's Avalanche is called Kirby's Ghost Trap in PAL releases. Kirby's Air Ride was the last game Masahiro Sakurai directed for HAL Laboratories. Kirby's Return to Dreamland had an excruciating 11 year long development cycle, going through multiple redesigns and restarts before finally being released in 2011 on the Wii. Link canonically kills Kirby, well, anti-Kirby, a featured boss in Link's Awakening. Kirby is also in Fortnite, well, at least he was left in the trailer for a few frames. This was removed for the PlayStation and Xbox versions of the games, leading many to assume it was a mistake. Kirby isn't in Fortnite, but Fortnite definitely is in Kirby. A 2019 My Nintendo wallpaper for Kirby's Epic Yarn randomly had a Fortnite logo in it. In an American commercial for Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby had teeth. Okay, so let's go from one of the most cursed Kirby facts to one of the most wholesome. In 2011, Nintendo held a contest with the Starlight Children's Foundation for children to invent a new Kirby super ability. One of the abilities shown in the contest gallery was Dr. Kirby, who would help others who are sick. If this isn't already one of the most wholesome things to ever exist, Dr. Kirby would actually come to exist, being added into Kirby Planet Robobot. While Kirby was always intended to be pink, on the American box art for Kirby's Dreamland, the first game in the series, he was actually white. This was a communication error with the team, because although Kirby was supposed to be pink, there was no way of knowing this by playing the game, because on the Game Boy, he just appeared in grayscale. Okay, going from the first Kirby to the newest Kirby, Kirby in the Forgotten Land is representing a brand new direction for the series, and features a new version of the main Kirby series logo, having changed the font for the first time since Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, and that logo has received a major update. Kirby's original name was Twinkle Popo or Popopo, and that scrap name reappeared as the Popopo Islands in Kirby Mass Attack. Kirby ended up being named after a lawyer for Nintendo of America, John Kirby. HAL is both a reference to being one letter before IBM and HAL and HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey. HAL made many games before Kirby including Eggerland Mystery which also released on the MSX in 1985. Eggerland Mystery starred both Lolo Lo and La 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 who would go on to be bosses turned allies in the Kirby franchise. 
Some of the most expensive amiibo are these DDD and Meta Knight features, which have manufacturing errors. Kirby Right Back At Ya, the TV show, was dubbed and localized by 4Kids Entertainment, which also had some questionable changes. One of these changes included DDD's chainsaw into a lightsaber looking thing. Why this was changed? I'm not quite sure. Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards is one of the few games in the series not to feature the curry dance in any form. However, there was some reference to the victory theme in the code, meaning it was probably originally planned. In Kirby's Return to Dreamland, Kirby occasionally smugly smirks while doing the dance. No clue why. In the same game, Kirby can also moonwalk as his dance, which is an obvious reference to Michael Jackson. Kirby appears quite often in the Smash Bros. promotional media like fighter reveals, like Rosalina, Min Min, Kazuya, and the World of Light, probably given that his creator is Masahiro Sakurai, who obviously produces Smash. Kirby technically first appeared as a background cameo in Arcana, a HAL game that dropped two months before Dreamland. During development, most Kirby games are internally named after food. Some of the most interesting ones are Kirby's Fighter Deluxe being Pizza and Planet Robobot being Torta. Team Kirby Clash Deluxe and Super Kirby Clash are Lime and Lime 2 respectively, obviously because they are somewhat sequels. Kirby was originally a placeholder icon before the developers fell in love with him. King Dedede's name is pronounced Day 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 in Japanese, and the Smash crowd chants both pronunciations. Sakurai voices Dedede in Smash, meaning in the Banjo and Kazooie and K. Rule trailers, he's literally laughing at the viewer. The super spicy Kirby was only in the first Kirby game, then it appeared 15 years later as a Smash item. Kirby's copy ability was also not in the first game, being added a year later in a sequel. In fact, ANS complained that in the first game, Kirby Dreamland on Game Boy, was too easy, so hence why copy abilities were added in the sequel, to incentivize players to fight the enemies rather than just fly over them. When coming up with the copy ability concept, developers came up with over 40 items for different abilities, however only 26 made into the sequel. Nobly cut a block making power, which we would eventually go on to see as one of Kirby's most iconic moves in Smash Bros. Kirby levels often spell out different words lightly related to the games, with Canvas Curse's levels spelling out Rainbow. Kirby's Adventure features the first appearance of Meta Knight, but he wasn't named that in that game. Speaking of Meta Knight, early concept art shown with this armor, which is undoubtedly cooler, but the complex nature makes him understandably cut. Apparently level 5-5 in Dreamland 2 resembles a naked woman. I don't know if that seems like a stretch, but people love claiming that this is, so here it is. Kirby Superstar's original title was Kirby of the Stars Active. There's an entire Metroid mission in Dreamland 3 about defeating Metroid, which is given to the player by Samus. Kirby's Canvas Curse is currently the highest rated Kirby game on Metacritic, which is weird considering that it's arguably the most untraditional mainline Kirby. Kirby's Kagiaro mission was originally a concept for a Kirby horror game. This was obviously cancelled. However, apparently it would have been about Kirby's mouth sealed shut from a curse which is actually kind of interesting. For Kirby's 20th anniversary, a group of 536 Kirby fans assembled in Seattle for PAX Prime in 2012 to claim the Guinness World Record for blowing bubblegum, which required the group to hold the bubbles for over 30 seconds. Nintendo organized the event and even printed Kirby-themed instructions on how to correctly chew and blow bubblegum. Kirby is often happy in the Japanese box art, but mad in the US box art. This comes down to Nintendo of America's marketing. Kirby Star Allies is the first Kirby game to have a happy Kirby on the North American box art, since Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. This was also the case in Kirby and the Forgotten Lands box art. Kirby's flying and hovering abilities were introduced to the game in order to differentiate the game from other platformers at that time, and give it an easier learning curve. Kirby has always been known for being a short character, especially when comparing him to other characters that show up in Smash. But canonically, in his own games, he's even shorter, coming in at a mere 8 inches tall. Kirby shares the same voice actress as Ness. Kirby's Dreamland was originally without an actual keyboard. Instead, series creator Masahiro Sakurai used a twin Famicom which used a trackball to control an on-screen keyboard. Did you know Kirby's first 3D appearance was in the game that wasn't even his own? That would be Smash 64, as Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards only came out about 14 months after that. The massive Smash Bros. stage, The Great Cave Offensive, was actually taken originally from Kirby Superstar, where it was a sub-game. In it, you explore a massive cave and collect valuable treasure along the way. Kirby's entire Smash moveset is compiled of copy abilities from his respective games. However, in The Amazing Mirror, it became a power-up in and of itself called Smash. You can get said Smash power-up by inhaling Master Hand, which appears as a mini-boss in The Amazing Mirror. 
Kirby's hat design while using the yo-yo copy ability is very similar to Ness's. Kirby's Epic Yarn wasn't originally a Kirby game. Instead, the main character was Prince Fluff. However, Nintendo felt that this concept wouldn't do well. So instead, they transformed it into a Kirby game, in which Kirby fit seamlessly. Kirby Planet Robobot was originally titled Kirby Triple Deluxe 2. However, when the idea of Robobot armor came up, they completely changed the direction of the game and the rest was history. Planet Robobot was also the first 3D Mario game to show Meta Knight without his mask. Planet Robobot was the first Kirby game to have the complete original soundtrack available outside of Japan. Club Nintendo discontinued on July 1st, 2015, just months after Kirby and the Rainbow Curse released. Because of this, Rainbow Curse is the first Kirby game not to come with a Club Nintendo pin code, since the program started in 2003. Rainbow Curse is one of the few Wii U games to actually feature 60 FPS gameplay, but purposely slows down character animations to capture the look of claymation during both cutscenes and gameplay. Kirby Star Allies was the first Kirby game to be localized in Chinese, in both traditional and simplified form. Kirby Star Allies has the largest voice cast out of any Kirby game, with a grand total of 10 voice actors. It was also the first Kirby game to see a worldwide release on the same day. Smash Bros. Brawl essentially yoinked Kirby's Air Ride menu. Despite a cult following, Kirby's Air Ride has never released a permanent digital download. Kirby's Epic Yarn takes up to 31 blocks of the Wii's memory. Kirby's Epic Yarn also takes as many sound effects from the Wii title Wario Land Shake It. The time between releases of Kirby Squeak Squad and Kirby's Epic Yarn marked the longest duration without an entirely new Kirby game in North America since the beginning of the series. Apparently, a stage on Kirby's Epic Yarn was originally planned for Super Smash Bros. Wii U. However, after the announcement of Yoshi's Woolly World, the yarn aesthetic was used for Yoshi Stage, and Kirby Stage was retooled into the Great Cave Offensive. If the player shakes the Wii remote right before the opening video plays in Kirby Return to Dreamland, a different Kirby appears during the opening cinematic on the title screen. Box Boy, also made by HAL, was originally planned to have Kirby as the protagonist, but it was shifted over to Box Boy when the game director decided Kirby extruding boxes from him would look too weird. Issue 39 of Nintendo Power states that Wispy Woods is also known as the Larkspur Liar, but nobody really uses this otherwise. Kirby's Pinball Land is the only Kirby game to use an engine from another Nintendo game, this being Pokemon Pinball. Speaking of pinball, the Gator enemy in Kirby Superstar is modeled after the Gators from Revenge of the Gator, a pinball game released by HAL Laboratory in 1989. This is Kibi. This is Yellow Kirby. Supposedly, they are completely different characters. Sakurai's favorite Kirby copy abilities are hand-to-hand -hand abilities like Fighter and Suplex. Kirby Slide, Kirby's Toy Box, and Kirby Star Stacker are the only games in the Kirby series to not feature any female characters. In the Japanese version of Kirby's Dream Land 3, Boss Butch's title screen has the phrase Nintendo 16 written across the top. This is a Nintendo 64 reference altered to fit to the 16-bit Super Famicom. When Kirby Nightmare in Dream Land is turned on, exactly 120 Kirbys rush across the screen. The acronym for Kirby right back at you spells Kirby's name, obviously minus the I. Kirby Squeak Squad was originally the first Kirby game to be released in Korea. One of the unused elements in Kirby Mass Attack is a palette selection screen where the player would have been able to change colors of the Kirby. In a behind-the-scenes Miiverse post, director Shinya Kumizaki mentions that the Sunstone items in Kirby Triple Deluxe contain the power of sunlight, and that a character who dislikes the sun may have turned the light into gems in an effort to rob Loria of its light. There are over 300 rooms in Kirby Triple Deluxe. Kirby Triple Deluxe also has the longest 100% speedrun out of any Kirby game. The top run was finished at a time of 6 hours and 34 minutes and 42 seconds on December 1st, 2018. The ESP copy abilities in Planet Robobot appear as a reference to NES. Kirby Family was a cancelled Game Boy Color game that, when combined to a Jaguar sewing machine, produced Kirby-themed embroidery patterns. Kirby Family is also the only cancelled Kirby game to have its full ROM leaked online. Kirby Star Allies is the most heavily censored Kirby game to this date, due to religion being one of the main themes. A fifth root variety, Grapes, was intended to appear in Kirby Mass Attack, but was scrapped. Volcano Valley from Kirby Mass Attack originally has a pinkish-purple hue and sports lanterns with green flames. During Kirby's Return to Dreamland's development, the creative team considered calling the game Kirby Wii Super Friend, in a reference to the game's super abilities and four-player co-op. 
No one truly knows Kirby's age. In the Japanese version of Kirby Superstar, there's a Mado sign in the credits of the Milky Way Wishes level. This was removed in international releases due to Nintendo of America's regulations on Japanese culture. Kirby's Tilt and Tumble's cartridge is the only Game Boy Color game that has the notch that allows it to fit inside an original Game Boy system. It will even display a message stating that this game doesn't work with that system and will only work on Game Boy Color handhelds. In the extra game credits of Kirby's Dream Land, Chucky's name is switched to Hurley. And finally, Kirby Battle Royale is the first Kirby game to be localized in Dutch. Starting off with the original Super Mario Bros, this game pushed Mario to be an instant household name. It's only five years after its release in 1985, a study taken in North America suggested that more children in the United States were familiar with Mario than they were with Mickey Mouse. Despite being a straightforward game, the book Super Mario Bros. The Complete Strategy Guide was the top-selling book in Japan for 1985, the year after the game's release. It was also the top-selling book in Japan for 1986. Nintendo hates emulation, except when they don't. They ported it over to the GBA for the Famicom Minis collection in Japan. It's also emulated on the GameCube's Animal Crossing game, it's emulated on the NES Classic, and many more on top of the Virtual Console. No one knows the exact release date of Super Mario Bros. in North America. The NES was released in test markets in October of 1985, but the exact date is still disputed. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe is just the NES game ported over to the GameCube Color, but at the time, having the biggest video game of all time in your pocket was insane. GameSpot rated this port a 9.9, .9, and it stayed the highest rated game in the series all the way until 2010 with Super Mario Galaxy 2. This game did actually have some additional features, including a U vs Boo mode, where you race against a Super Mario World Boo sprite. This unlocks after reaching 100,000 points in the main mode, which makes it one of the only times in the series where this points counter does anything meaningful. Everyone knows that the first ever Super Mario Bros. enemy is a Goomba, but there was almost a universe where it was a Koopa. When asked by Eurogamer, Miyamoto said originally we had a Koopa Troopa that came out, but we thought it may be a little too difficult for players to jump on it and kick it. That's why we created the Goomba. The first seven Bowsers you fight are actually all fake. If you kill Bowser with the Fire Flower power-up, you'll see that the Goomba pops out during the fight within the first seven worlds. It was a Goomba the whole time. All Night Nippon is a Japanese radio program which is still airing today. In 1986, we got an All Night Nippon Super Mario Bros, which upon first viewing, at least to me, looks more like an old Flash animation than anything official Nintendo would make. Super Mario Bros. has got nothing on Super Luigi Bros., which is just a mirrored version of the game with Luigi instead of Mario. He does have a higher jump, however. Hudson Soft, yes, Hudson Soft, released Super Mario Bros. Special, an officially licensed PC port of the original game. If you follow Nintendo closely, you'll know just how insane this is looking back. Nintendo also released an arcade port of Super Mario Bros. titled Versus Super Mario Bros which was a more competitive version of the game that added minor changes to some levels to make them fit more for an arcade port. The game was later ported to the Switch as part of the Arcade Archive series. Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan didn't release overseas, as Nintendo thought other players would not like the game's difficulty. The game was eventually made available to overseas players via the Super Mario All-Stars on the SNES, and the name was changed to Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. The Super Mario Bros. 2 that the rest of the world got was simply an already existing game, Doki Doki Panic, and the protagonists were replaced with Mario characters. This version of the game was playable in Japan, however, through the Famicom Satellaview, and it was titled Super Mario Bros. USA. Considering Super Mario Bros. 2 was a reskin of Doki Doki Panic, this means that iconic Mario characters like Birdo and Shy Guy were first introduced in a game that weren't even originally Mario characters. You can actually jump over the flagpole in Super Mario Bros. This became an actual feature in the Lost Levels when a warp zone could be found past the flagpole. The first ever video game Daisy ever appeared in is Super Mario Land, where she takes on the role as the kidnapped princess in Sarasa Land. Despite being an established Mario character since 1989, Daisy has only been playable in one mainline Mario game, and it's actually Super Mario Run, where her and her double jump were made unlockable through the game's Remix 10 update. Many Americans' first exposure to Super Mario Bros. 3 was through the 1989 film The Wizard. Super Mario Bros. 3 is the final game used for the movie's video game tournament, despite the film releasing even before the actual title. When Super Mario Bros. 3 was being localized for North America, the manual gave Koopalings no unique names. All the names of the Koopalings were provided from Dave Brooks, who named them after famous musicians, singers, and celebrities. For instance, Ludwig von Koopa was named after Ludwig van Beethoven because of the resemblance to their wild hairstyles. 
The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 gave all the Koopalings unique names, as the show was produced before the localization of the game. Wendy is probably the weirdest name being Cootie Pie. Crouching on these white blocks for a certain amount of time in Super Mario Bros. 3 will put the player behind the level, allowing them to run past anything. If you try to recreate this in Super Mario Maker, Mario will do a slight jump as a nod to this original easter egg. Super Mario Bros. 3's port for the Game Boy Advance added 30 additional levels to the original game that could only be obtained through scanning cards on the e-reader. These levels were made available on the Wii U's port without the need of the cards. Have you ever wondered why the Super Mario Bros. Advance games comes with Mario Bros? Apparently this was done so anyone with any of these games could play multiplayer through the GBA's link cable. While Miyamoto wanted to implement a rideable dinosaur since Super Mario Bros, Yoshi was never a power-up until the release of Super Mario World due to the hardware limitations of the NES. However, you can ride Yoshi in an NES game, that being an NES port of Mario is Missing, which released in 1994 long after the Super Nintendo. According to Super Mario World's manual, the sunken ghost ship level you encounter is actually one of the airships you downed in Super Mario Bros. 3. While everyone is familiar with Peach's castle and Bowser's castle, Mario actually had his own castle in Super Mario Land 2, which Wario ends up stealing and rebranding as his own castle. Despite being an entirely new franchise, the first Wario Land and Yoshi's Island games were given the subtitles Super Mario Land 3 and Super Mario Land 2, which was likely done in order to market the game to people familiar with Mario. However, does this technically make Wario Land 2 Super Mario Land 4 and Yoshi's Island DS Super Mario World 3? New Super Mario Bros. Mii was a tech demo for the Wii U that allowed players to play as their Mii and was mostly designed to show off the gamepad's ability to play games without a TV. This ended up becoming New Super Mario Bros. U, as you might have guessed. In 2015, Nintendo brought back their iconic Nintendo World Championships, 25 years after the first one was hosted. The game's final event was a contest between who could get the fastest times in the levels Nintendo Trios designed for Super Mario Maker, a game that hadn't even been released at the time. Not only had the game yet to release, but some of the tools used in the levels had never been shown off before, which definitely caught the players off guard. After completing every special world level in Super Mario World, the levels will turn fall colored and certain enemies will don Mario masks. The four colors displayed on the top of the Special World screen are a reference to the button layout in the Super Famicom's controllers. In the Japanese version of Super Mario World, Yoshi can eat dolphins, but in the international releases, he can't. It was re-added to the GBA port in 2001. In 2019, a fan created a Super Mario Battle Royale online game in which 100 players tried to make it the furthest in the original Super Mario Bros. Nintendo ended up taking the project down only to release their own Mario Battle Royale the next year, titled Super Mario Bros. 35. They then went on to stop support for their own game months later, making it no longer playable. Super Mario Bros. 3 released twice in English. In the second version, many of the world's names were changed. Examples including Big Island to Giant Land and Kupahari Desert to Desert Land. The infinite one-ups trick from the original Super Mario Bros. isn't a glitch or exploit. According to Miyamoto, the developers tested it and intentionally left it in the game to reward advanced players. But to his surprise, some players were very good at performing it. This island from World 3 of Super Mario Bros. 3 is shaped like Japan, and its castle's place for Nintendo HQ is in Kyoto. If you let the chain chop charge at you 50 times, it'll actually break free of its chains and attack you. The original founders of ID Software built a prototype for a PS port of Super Mario Bros. 3, but when they presented it to Nintendo, the project was shut down. Despite their perceived failure, they went on to create Doom in 1993. Some enemies from Super Mario Bros. 3 are based on real-life experiences from the developers. Chain Chops are based on Miyamoto almost being bitten by a ferocious dog as a child, and Takashi Tezuka said that booze were based off his wife, who was typically shy and timid but one day exploded at him for spending too much time at work. To promote the release of Super Mario Maker, Miyamoto answered Mario questions relating to a few Mario myths in a video uploaded to Nintendo UK's YouTube channel. In this video, he confirmed that Super Mario Bros. 3 was all just a play from the moment you see the curtains open. In the Japanese version of Super Mario World in the GBA port of the game, Yoshi's house is signed Super Dragon Yoshi. Super Dragon is also the name of Yoshi's final smash from Brawl and Smash 4. To celebrate the 25th anniversary of Super Mario, Nintendo produced a limited release of Super Mario All-Stars for the Nintendo Wii. The game is so identical to the original SNES title that the game's controller settings still display SNES controls instead of Wiimotes. New Super Luigi U intentionally dropped the bros from its title as Mario is no longer present. Oddly enough, his hat can be seen attending Peach's birthday though. Mario is replaced by Nabbit, who is the only Mario enemy to be playable in a mainline Mario game. He also steals items and cannot be hit by other enemies. 
Most copies of Super Mario Bros. games that were sold were the version that included Duck Hunt in the cartridge. There are also another version that included Super Mario Bros., Duck Hunt, and World Class Track Meet. It was revealed in a 1993 Nintendo character guide that Yoshi's full name is T. Yoshisor Munchakubas. The T stands for Time to Subscribe. I'm so sorry, I had to do it. Since 1981, Mario had always been depicted wearing a blue shirt with red overalls. However, this was changed with the release of Super Mario Bros. 2, which swapped his palette to the modern red shirt with blue overalls, though the manual of the game still depicted him otherwise. Peach also had her color palette changed. In the original Super Mario Bros, she sports red hair, and she has brown hair in Super Mario Bros 2 and 3, and she's had blonde hair since the release of Super Mario World. Many people are under the impression that Princess Toadstool and Princess Peach are two different characters because of this. However, Peach was merely her Japanese name, which was slowly adopted after the release of Mario 64. Super Mario Maker 2 had new game styles that were so unique that they required the creator to reset their entire level in order to use them. Yet despite the plurality of this text, Super Mario 3D World was the only game featured in this section. The first Mario game made without Shigeru Miyamoto's involvement was Super Mario Land. Super Mario Run is the only mainline Mario game not available on Nintendo consoles. Super Mario Maker was originally going to be a successor to Mario Paint before the creators decided to make the game into a do-it-yourself level creation title. The game features several references to Mario Paint, including some of the game's music and sound effects, along with this fly swatting minigame being originally from the SNES title. Splatoon beta graphics can be found inside the code of Super Mario Maker. Super Mario Land games are the only 2D Mario games not to feature Luigi. It's possible to play as Luigi in New Super Mario Bros. You can only play as him in the main story by holding down L and R as you press A when selecting a file. After completing New Super Mario Bros, if you input the secret code while on the world map, you'll enable a secret challenge mode which disables moving backwards in a level, similar to how the first games worked. If you enter the final level of Peach's Castle as Peachette in New Super Mario Bros U, Peach will act confused when you enter. If you lose all your lives in the original Super Mario Bros, you can hold A and start on the title screen and go back to the beginning of The Last World Died On. In the Super Mario All-Stars port of Mario Bros. 3, the creatures the kings transformed into were all changed to different characters across Super Mario games. The mushroom and flagpole sound effects are the same. The mushroom sound effect is just sped up a little bit. It's possible to beat Super Mario World without fighting a single boss, using a complicated glitch that breaks the game and summons the credits. At this time, the official record for Super Mario Bros. is 4 minutes and 54 seconds, held by speedrunner Nifsky. The names of the levels from Super Mario World's special zones are all 90s slang terms that loosely mean cool. There's an additional 256 levels inside of Super Mario Bros. However, they're super buggy and impossible to finish. The most popular way to access them is by putting Super Mario Bros. in the NES, taking it out, putting in tennis, starting a game, then take it out, and then put Mario Bros. back in and hold A and start. Not sure how anyone figured this out, but it's super cool nonetheless. World 9 of Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels can only be accessed if you beat the game without using the warp pipe. Four more secret worlds can be unlocked in the Lost Levels after beating the game. The demo level you see on the title screen is actually an unfinished special world level named Groovy. There's a hidden test level inside of Super Mario World that uses rotating blocks to spell out the word test. There are over 200 copies of this level in the game. The symbol on Yoshi's mailbox is actually the logo for the Japanese Postal Service. The mini mushroom power-up from New Super Mario Bros. actually made its first appearance in Mario Party 4, where it was also used to allow players to enter small pipes. With new Super Mario Bros. 2's marketing being centered around collecting coins, collecting 1 million coins will result in a Golden Mario statue appearing on the title screen. The only way to fully 100% new Super Mario Bros. 2 is to collect a total of 9,999,999 coins, which will put a Golden Raccoon Mario statue on the title screen. If you want to have 5 sparkling stars on your save file in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, you have to 100% the game without ever seeing a super guide, which will appear on the level when you fail to clear it 8 times. Red Yoshi was originally going to appear in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, however he was replaced by Pink Yoshi during development. The Mario on the Super Mario Bros. 2 box art was actually taken from the Japanese and European box arts of Super Mario Bros. The mushroom in his hand was replaced for a turnip to make it more unique to that game. You can activate easy mode in Super Mario Land 2 by pressing select on the file selection screen. 
New Super Mario Bros. 2 is actually the third New Super Mario Bros. game. You probably already knew this, but I thought it was just so dumb that I had to include it. Peach's Final Smash plays a sped up version of the song that plays in Coin Heavens in Super Mario Bros. 3. The only mainline Mario game that does not feature underwater levels are Super Mario Bros. 2 and Super Mario Run. Super Mario Bros. on the NES remained the best-selling Mario game for over 35 years, until it was recently passed by Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You probably already know that the Mercedes GLA was a cart part in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but did you know that it was also a costume in Super Mario Maker? Using the music box item on the world map of Super Mario Bros. 3 will play a relaxing version of the original Super Mario Bros. theme. World 1-1 of Super Mario Bros. was specifically designed to help teach the player how to play the game. Everything from the placement of the question mark blocks to the Goomba to the green pipes helped gradually teach the player how to maneuver the world of Mario. Mario is 5 foot 1. Super Mario World was subtitled as Super Mario Bros. 4 in Japan. The only Nintendo system that does not have a Super Mario title is the Virtual Boy. There was going to be one, however, called VB Mario Land, but it was cancelled due to the extremely poor sales of the Virtual Boy. The credits for Super Mario Bros. 2 has several errors, such as Ostro and Birdo having their names switched. The Super Ball power-up from Super Mario Land has no visual indication on Mario that he holds the power-up. In the standard release of Super Mario World, Luigi is just a palette swap Mario, but in the All-Stars version, Luigi gets his own sprite. In the Game Boy Advance version, Luigi gets another new sprite and can now jump higher. In the original Super Mario Bros, Small Mario is incapable of crouching. However, he was later given this ability in Super Mario Maker 2. It's technically possible to upload an unbeatable level in Super Mario Maker using glitches, despite the developer's intentions. Coins are the only item to make an appearance in every mainline Mario game. According to Miyamoto, Donkey Kong was supposed to translate to a stupid ape. He thought the word donkey meant dumb, but ultimately the name stuck. The last Donkey Kong game developed by Nintendo was Jungle Beat in 2004. The phrase, it's on like Donkey Kong, was trademarked by Nintendo in 2001. The phrase actually first appeared in an Ice Cube song named Now I Gotta Wetcha in 1992. Grant Kirkhope, the creator of the DK rap, also voices Donkey Kong throughout Donkey Kong 64. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat was the first game to receive an ESRB rating of E10+. Donkey Kong 64 holds the record for the most collectibles in any game with a total of 3,821. Universal sued Nintendo in 1982 over the name Donkey Kong for supposed copyright infringement on King Kong, but this case was quickly dropped after King Kong had already been in the public domain for many years. Nintendo's lawyer John Kirby would go on to be the namesake of the Kirby series. Donkey Kong was the first game in the platforming video game genre. There was an unreleased NES game called Donkey Kong Jr.'s Fun with Music. The first use of the D-pad was on the Donkey Kong Game & Watch. It was also the first use of a dual screen, which would later be famously used by the Nintendo DS. There's a sprite of Mario and Pauline sitting in the code of the original arcade game, which suggests that at some point in development there would have been an ending to the game. In the final level of the arcade game known as the 22nd board, Mario will automatically die 8 seconds into the level due to a programming oversight. On the box art of Donkey Kong for the NES, Jumpman sprite is replaced by Mario's sprite from Super Mario Bros. There's a glitch in the NES port where if you climb down the bottom right ladder, it will take you to the top level. In the beginning of Donkey Kong's development, there was no jump mechanic. It was just hammers and ladders. But when Miyamoto and the team thought about what they would do if a barrel was coming at them, it only made sense for them to implement jumping. In the arcade version of Donkey Kong, there was a secret text found in the files that read, Congratulations! If you analyze difficult this program, we would teach you. And then it shows a telephone and extension code for Aikami Studios, the developers of Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was originally going to be based on the Popeye characters, but Nintendo couldn't get the license. So Mario was based on Popeye, Pauline was based on Olive, and Donkey Kong was based on Bluto. There was a secret inside the Atari 400 and 800 version of Donkey Kong for over 23 years. You could view the programmer's initials if you did a series of convoluted tasks. First, you had to get a high score in which the second and third numbers were 7 or 3. Next, you must get a game over from a high fall. Then you have to set the difficulty to 4 and then wait through the demo until they appear. This wasn't found until LMD announced this easter egg existed in 2006. 
In a 2000 commercial for the Game Boy Color, an explosion knocks all of the fur off of Donkey Kong, revealing a skinny ape. Donkey Kong 3's main protagonist isn't Mario, it's Stanley the Bugman. To promote the release of Donkey Kong Country on the SNES, Nintendo made a promotional VHS tape that talked about the development of the game. It was titled Donkey Kong Country Exposed. Donkey Kong from the original arcade game is actually now Cranky Kong from the Country games, and the new DK is Donkey Kong III. Which begs the question, where did Donkey Kong Jr. go? The only Mario game that King K. Rule has ever appeared in is Mario Super Sluggers. There was an N64 controller given out through Nintendo Power. In an advertisement, it showed the full Donkey Kong 64 logo, but on the actual controllers, it had an abbreviated DK64 logo. In a beta screenshot for Donkey Kong 64, there's a poster of Banjo and Kazooie hanging from the outside of a shower. Donkey Kong was the secret final boss in Punch Out for the Wii. There's a picture of a dolphin in Donkey Kong's cabin, supposedly being a reference to the codename Dolphin, which would go on to become the GameCube. Nintendo outsourced development of Donkey Kong to Ikami Sashinki. Because no contract was signed, Ikami held the rights to Donkey Kong's source code. Later, when Nintendo created Donkey Kong Jr. without Ikami's involvement, Ikami sued Nintendo for over $90 million for copyright. It was ruled that Nintendo did not own the rights to Donkey Kong's source code, and Nintendo and Ikami settled out of court. Donkey Kong Jr. was also the first game developed by Nintendo without the help of outside developers. In the manual of Donkey Kong Land, it's revealed that the game was created because Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong had a bet with Cranky Kong that they could have fun without fancy graphics. In 1981, 3,000 radar scope machines were ordered to be created and sold in the US market, but only 1,000 of them sold, leaving 2,000 cabinets unsold in a warehouse. President of Nintendo Hiroshi Yamauchi was given the task of creating a new game that could easily be converted from the existing radar scope machines. He entrusted lead game designer Shigeru Miyamoto and head engineer Gunpei Yokoi. The game they created was Donkey Kong. In Diddy Kong Racing, there is an unused balloon model that has Nintendo, Rare, and Pro Am 64 logos. In the beta version of Donkey Kong Country, the banana counter went all the way up to three digits instead of two. Inputting this code into Donkey Kong Country in the File Select menu will take you to a sound test menu. Donkey Kong Country was named Super Donkey Kong in Japan. Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 has a piracy screen that will display when a cartridge has 0 kilobytes of SRAM. Samus's ship can be seen in the background of the level of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. If the player goes back into the hut at the beginning of 1-1 in Donkey Kong Country Returns, in Ground Pounds, the static TV will start to play Donkey Kong Country Returns. Mr. Game & Watch can be seen in the Foggy Fumes level of Donkey Kong Country Returns. Donkey Kong is 7-10, but when he's on his knuckles, he's 6-1. That's a big monkey. King K. Rule is notorious for rebranding. In Donkey Kong Country 2, he's Captain K. Rule. In 3, he's Baron K. Rulenstein. In DK64, he's King Crusher K. Rule. In Donkey Kong Country 2, Cranky has a ceremony type screen where he ranks Diddy Kong among his video game heroes, based on how many coins you've collected where Mario, Yoshi, and Link all make cameos. Nintendo also used this screen to mock some of the competition at the time. A trash can titled No Hopers has a pair of shoes resembling Sonics and a blaster resembling Earthworm Jim's next to it. The bongo using rhythm based Donkey Kong game Donkey Konga had a third game that was only released in Japan. In Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, the host of the barrel minigame, Bink, resembles the skeleton of Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was one of the first games to use cutscenes to tell a story in an arcade game. Nintendo cancelled a sequel to Diddy Kong Racing for Nintendo GameCube, simply called Donkey Kong Racing. The development ceased just one month before Microsoft bought Rare. There was also a DK puzzle game called Coconut Crackers that ultimately had the same fate and was cancelled around the same time of the Microsoft purchase. One of Nintendo's first educational games was Donkey Kong Jr. Math, which was released in 1983. The theme that plays when you get the pickaxe in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is a remix of the very theme that plays when you pick up a hammer in the original Donkey Kong. The longtime world record holder in Donkey Kong, Billy Mitchell, was accused of using a cheated emulation of the game to acquire his world record scores. Twin Galaxies, the governing body that validates world record claims, invalidated his score in 2018 for discrepancies found in a 2000 documentary, The King of Kong. A defamation case was filed by Mitchell in 2020, and the case is still ongoing. 
Donkey Kong Country 2 was originally going to be for the Virtual Boy, before that version of the game was scrapped due to poor system sales. Wrinkly Kong can be seen playing Super Mario 64 in her cave in Donkey Kong Country 3. Bubbles from Clue Clue Land is a secret character in DK King Swing. The song BGMA from Donkey Kong 3 is a cover of the famous Corsicop piece, The Flight of the Bumblebee. Diddy Kong is Donkey Kong's nephew. There's a two season animated TV show based on Donkey Kong Country that is fully animated and has musical numbers. It's very weird and I highly recommend that you do not look it up. Dixie Kong and Tiny Kong replaced Banjo and Conker in the Diddy Kong Racing DS port. This was done because Microsoft now owned the rights to those characters and they could not appear on a Nintendo system. Pipsy from Diddy Kong Racing was the main character of a cancelled rare game called Astro Mouse. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast was originally developed for the GameCube using the Bongo controllers, but was moved to the Wii and replaced the Bongo controls for a Wiimo and Nunchuck configuration. Miyamoto was a big critic of Donkey Kong Country's pre-rendered 3D graphics, stating that it would be too overwhelming to the player. He even said Donkey Kong Country will prove that players will put up with mediocre gameplay as long as the art is good. He later redacted the statement saying he was frustrated because his game Yoshi's Island was getting rejected because it didn't have as nice of graphics as DKC. The highest rated Donkey Kong game on Metacritic is Donkey Kong 64 at 90%. The lowest ranked DK game is Donkey Kong Barrel Blast at 46%. Cranky Kong's line, I did this using one life and it took me less than an hour during Donkey Kong Country's credits was a remnant of a scrap mode in which you could actually play as Cranky Kong. Weirdly enough, the Japanese version of Donkey Kong Country was actually easier than the international version. Rare was the first non-Japanese game development company to enter a second party game relationship with Nintendo. Donkey Kong is not actually playable in Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3, he's actually the damsel in distress. The first Donkey Kong cabinets were soft launched at two bars in Seattle. In 2013, a video game developer hacked the original Donkey Kong to switch Mario and Pauline, so Mario was the damsel in distress and Pauline was the hero. He did this because his daughter was bummed that she couldn't play as the girl. Donkey Kong's Jimmy Neutron-like hair was given to him by Rare to make him look more human. While developing Donkey Kong Country, Rare actually researched the way horses gallop to form DK's running animation. According to Donkey Kong 64, DK weighs 800 pounds, which is much larger than the average gorilla. Donkey Kong's red tie represents his new domesticated, unvillainous role in Nintendo games, in contrast to the early arcade games. The first game he wore his tie-in was the 1994 Game Boy remake of Donkey Kong. It was also the first Game Boy game to have enhanced features while using the Super Game Boy peripheral. Donkey Kong has been in every Mario Kart game since N64. If you count Donkey Kong Jr. being in Super Mario Kart, he's been in every game. Seth Rogen is set to play Donkey Kong in the upcoming Super Mario Bros. movie, releasing April 7, 2023. Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong are actually dating. In 2010, Nintendo Power ranked Donkey Kong as the 8th favorite Nintendo hero and the 8th favorite Nintendo villain. In the cancelled game Diddy Kong Pilot, there was a character called Redneck Kong, According to an anonymous Rare employee when asked, he said that he's been killed off. Diddy Kong Pilot was actually turned into Banjo Pilot for the GBA. You can unlock the original Donkey Kong arcade game in the frantic factory of Donkey Kong 64. You can then unlock the Donkey Kong coin by playing the arcade game. There was a Donkey Kong monster truck that ran in the Monster Jam circuit from 2007 through 2010. At a couple of game stores in England, you could actually purchase Donkey Kong Country Returns for a banana. If you're one of the first 20 customers to arrive at the day of launch with a banana, you could actually trade it in for the game. While many believe that Donkey Kong Jr. is in fact Donkey Kong 2, there's actually a Game & Watch called Donkey Kong 2. It's nearly identical to the original Donkey Kong Jr., so maybe they just renamed it for the Game & Watch. Except there was also a Donkey Kong Jr. Game & Watch released the year prior. I don't know what's up with these games that end in the number 2, but it really shouldn't be that hard to number your games, especially when it's the second game in the series. The Kremlins were originally part of a cancelled Rare game, but they were introduced as the villains of DK Country because they thought they fit in nicely with the franchise. Donkey Kong Country is the best-selling non-bundled 16-bit game in history. Rare proposed a Donkey Kong Country 4 for the DS that would have been a 2.5D platformer, but it was ultimately turned down by Nintendo. 
Donkey Kong 64 was the first N64 game to use the RAM expansion pack. Cranky Kong owns a Killer Instinct cabinet in Donkey Kong Country 2. Mario is the villain of Donkey Kong Jr. and DK Jr. must save Donkey Kong from Mario. Donkey Kong Jr. is the king of World 4 in the All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 3. The best-selling DK game is Donkey Kong Country Returns with 6.5 million units sold. The least-selling game in the series is Donkey Kong Land 3 with about 1 million units sold. One of DK's idle animations in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze shows him playing on his 3DS, but on the Switch version of the game, he pulls out a Switch instead of a 3DS. The DK rap's official name in the Donkey Kong 64 soundtrack is Da Banana Bunch. Before the game became what we know as Splatoon, the prototype was originally a simplistic shooter where the player controlled an ink-firing tofu-shaped block. Before Nintendo decided to use squids, they thought about using rabbits as the main avatars. They also thought about using Mario characters because they knew it would be less of a monetary risk if a well-known franchise like Mario was the main stage. Once they landed on squids, they still looked pretty whack, not fully formulating the inkling squid kid design until later in development. Despite the Inklings being squids, they die instantly when touching water. There are various fictional musical artists and bands within the Splatoon series, but none, not even the Squid Sisters, have released more songs than Dead Fish. The least prolific band in the Splatoon series are the Cuttlefish Idols, who were popular before the first game is placed in the timeline, and therefore have zero listenable tracks. Only posters are scattered throughout the various environments. Nintendo released outfits based on the Splatoon manga and anime series as free DLC in 2015. Days before the release of Splatoon in 2015, a truck holding many copies of Splatoon discs and amiibos were hijacked on the way to a retail warehouse. Splatoon 2 has a reversible cover that features Salmon Run box art. The back of the amiibo box in Inkopolis Plaza and Square are fully detailed even though you can't see them in normal gameplay. Scroll 26 in Splatoon 1's campaign shows a human skeleton with a Wii U, stating that they're said to be over 12,000 years old. This means Splatoon is set in the very far future. A month before the release of Splatoon, Nintendo held the Splatoon Mess Fest event at Santa Monica Pier, where celebrities competed in an obstacle course and played Splatoon before launch. Splatoon was the first new IP Nintendo EAD had released since Pikmin released 14 years earlier on the Nintendo GameCube. The Squid Sisters are named Callie and Marie, an obvious reference to Calamari, but the off-the-hook members from Splatoon 2, Pearl and Marina, have been theorized to be a reference to Pearl Harbor. Obviously, this seems way out of place for a Nintendo game, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Sunken Scrolls 25 and 26 in Splatoon 1 confirmed that Judd the Cat is immortal. Splatoon 2's Salmon Run map, Ruins of Arc Polaris, is actually a defunct human ship left over from times past, confirmed by the English writing on the stage and background. This is one of the only times that you can see English text in the Splatoon series, obviously outside of UI and text bubbles. The language that the Inklings do speak is called Inkling, so the Inklings speak Inkling, but the Octarians also speak Inkling. Squid Jump, Squid Racer, Squid Ball, and Squid Beats are all retro arcade-themed minigames that could be played in Inkopolis Plaza, and while waiting to enter a match, only Squid Jump was available unless you were able to unlock the others through the game's amiibo challenges. Each of these games' featured artworks is inspired by box arts used for the NES and Famicom games. Squid Beats was the only game to return in Splatoon 2, as Squid Beats 2 outside the shoal. Splatoon unfortunately fell victim to the Wii U's ridiculous marketing, and releasing alongside advertisements like this. Rated everyone 10 and up. Splatoon played a key role in the announcement of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The initial reveal trailer featured an intricate cutscene that left many fans thinking it was a major Splatoon announcement. The rarest form of currency across the Splatoon games are the Super Sea Snails, which could either be used to re-roll or add sub-abilities to gear pieces. However, they could only be obtained by participating in Splatfests. The amount of Super Sea Snails that you're awarded with depend on the rank you achieve during a Splatfest, the five ranks being Fanboy or Fangirl, Fiend, Defender, Champion, or King and Queen. Super Sea Snails also make a cameo appearance in Animal Crossing Welcome Amiibo, and they can be obtained by purchasing them from Inkwell. 
The character Inkwell is a complete reference to Splatoon as well. His shirt features the same logo used to represent rank battles. Splatoon's Splatfest themes were all different depending on what region you were playing. For instance, the first Splatfest was Cats vs Dogs in America, Pop Music vs Rock Music in Europe, and Rice vs Bread in Japan. The only Splatoon 1 Splatfest that shared the same theme was Kali vs Marine. There was also a Pokemon themed Splatfest in every region. However, it was called Pokemon Red vs Blue in the Americas and Europe, and Pokemon Red vs Green in Japan. Unlike the Kali and Marie Splatfest, each region had separate results. Despite this, Pokemon Blue slash Green still won in every region. Cory made a Splatoon 2 headset that made use of the sound splitter that would split the audio coming from the Switch and your phone for the 1% of users that use the Nintendo online service for in-game chat. The headset could also be bought and worn in-game. Splatoon's final boss features a live performance of Cali Marie, with this song being called Calamari Incantation. Starting in 2016, Nintendo started putting on Splatoon Hollow Live concerts with the Squid Sisters and Off the Hook. The Squid Sisters aren't sisters, they're actually just cousins. They're related through their grandfather, Cap'n Cuttlefish. Cap'n Cuttlefish's full name is Craig Cuttlefish. As of Splatoon 2, Cap'n Cuttlefish is canonically 130 years old, which is a lot older than the average lifespan of a squid being 3 to 5 years. The only new ranked mode to come from Splatoon 2 was Clan Blitz, and it sucks. There was another ranked mode, 8 Ball, that was datamined, which had you try to push a ball to the opposing side's goal before they got into your goal. It was never released, but could we see this return in Splatoon 3? There was also another ranked mode that appeared in the code called Rocket, which would have had you shoot a rocket and the more ink shot into it, the higher it would go. If you wave at Cali Marie or Pearl and Marina outside of the studio, they'll wave back. The passengers on the Deep Sea Metro are known as Denizens of the Deep. Apparently, they're banned from living on the surface. The name of the train's conductor is Sea Cucumber, which is a play on word referencing his species, a sea cucumber. The species this unnamed character is based off is the Blobfish, which was determined as the world's ugliest animal in a 2013 poll. Before the game launched, Nintendo hosted a Splatoon global test fire, which players could compete online and get an early feel of the game. This global test fire can likely be considered Nintendo's first open online beta. Shifty Station was a special map designed for each Splatfest in Splatoon 2. They all had a gimmick that made them unique. Examples include ink rails, moving platforms, and ink switches. The maps were also named after pop culture shows and movies like Gossip Girl, Hunger Games, and Goosebumps. After the final Splatfest, these once lost maps were made playable in private battle. There was also an unused version of Shifty Station codenamed Box. Salmon Run was a mode released alongside the release of Splatoon 2. It could only be played during certain hours mimicking real life shifts. While this was kinda cool, it made it pretty annoying when trying to play with friends online. So in Splatoon 3, they made it available 24-7 in what is now known as Salmon Run Next Wave. Each weapon class has their own hero replica, which is used in the game's campaign. You could unlock any replica weapon for personal use online by completing each level with a particular weapon. Judd originally lived alongside humans, yet his body was frozen when they were wiped out, and now he lives alongside the Inkling. Judd isn't just an announcer, he actually determines the results of each match with his incredibly gifted vision. In Splatoon 2, Judd represents the player's team. The character who declares victory for the opponent's team is Little Judd. Little Judd is not Judd's son, but instead an exact clone of Judd. Krusty Sean, who runs Shrimp Kicks, gives off the appearance of a half-fried shrimp. However, his body is not actually fried. Rather, he's just wearing a jacket that makes him appear that way. The owner of Ye Old Clothing Shop from Splatoon 2 is Jalfonso, who's the son of Jalfonso, who ran Booyah Base in the first Splatoon. However, Jalfonso's birth is described as splitting off, which might make family dinners a bit awkward. At first, it may seem as though Sheldon wears goggles to protect him as he crafts weapons. However, he is also said to have very poor vision due to strenuous work with working with tiny weapon parts late at night. Mo the Clownfish might be the most obnoxious character in Splatoon. Whenever you buy gear from cooler heads, he will berate you and insult you, offering a different insult depending on your in-game level. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was the first game Splatoon characters appeared in on the Switch. While Splatoon 2 offers very limited ways of player communication through text, there can be other uses for the features. If a player uses a Booyah Bomb, teammates can spam Booyah to help charge the special attack faster. 
Splatoon 3's story mode protagonist is called Agent 3. Splatoon 1's protagonist is also Agent 3. They can't be the same character because in Splatoon 3 your character can also be an Octolink. So what exactly is going on here? In Splatoon 1, you could use the Miiverse to send messages in Inkopolis Plaza. The Miiverse was shut down before the release of Splatoon 2, so to keep the fun community feel the first game had, they added a mailbox feature that would let you make these same Miiverse-like posts in Inkopolis Square. A Splatoon trophy was added to Smash for Wii U after the release that could only be unlocked if you bought the Inkling outfit for your Mii. Splat Zones along with Rank Battles were announced as free DLC that would be released once enough players reached level 10. How many is enough? Well, Nintendo never specified, but it ended up coming anyways. Splatoon 2 hosted a Splatfest that was a collaboration with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. The first week was themed Leonardo vs. Raph. The second week was themed Donnie vs. Mikey. And then the final week was themed around the victors of the previous two weeks, being Raph vs. Donnie. Nintendo announced that the Chaos vs. Order Splatfest would be the final regular Splatfest. However, they went on to host three rematch Splatfests in 2020 and a Super Mario 35th Anniversary Splatfest in 2021. The NSAP series of blasters are based on the Zapper controllers for the NES and Famicom. Splatoon didn't actually have customizable hairstyles until Splatoon 2. The hair your avatar had was only based around their gender. The first themed pro controller for the Nintendo Switch centered around Splatoon 2. During 2020's free melee trend, many Splatoon players in the NA tournament changed their in-game tags to reference this outrage with Nintendo's decision to shut down an online melee tournament. Nintendo went on to cancel the Splatoon event's livestream, and many believe this decision was due to the player's name changes. There was a local multiplayer mode in Splatoon 1 called the Battle Dojo, in which one person was on the gamepad and the other person was on a controller, and they would try to shoot as many balloons as they could in under 30 seconds. Merch done grew up in Splatoon 3. Bimitsu held contests in which fans could send in designs for new gear, and they were actually added to Splatoon 2's store. Upon Splatoon's release, there was a fake leak that quickly spread which suggested blood from Super Mario Sunshine would be added into the game as DLC. The first Maximus Cup in Tetris 99 to feature a theme outside of Tetris was based around Splatoon 2. Splatoon's directs and announcements are typically conveyed by the Squid Research Lab. Splatoon's research lab released a chart that details the relationship between many species across the Splatoon series. Splatoon's loading screen features an image of what appears to be an Inkling's apartment. A year and a half before the events of Splatoon 2, Inkopolis Square was a rundown street, but was renovated and is now a sick hangout spot for young Inkling. Each member of Squid Beak Splatoon, the platoon where Captain Cuttlefish and Judd fought alongside each other in the Great Turf War, armed themselves with a bamboozler. A Moses Schellendorf is another member of this platoon. He is also the grandfather of Sheldon. Despite appearing like an octopus in Splatoon, DJ Octavio has a humanoid form that can be found in the Sunken Scroll. In this image, he can be seen wearing the same Kabuto hat. In Splatoon 2's lobby waiting room, you can press buttons on the D-pad and it would actually add different effects to the lobby music. Many references to old Nintendo consoles can be found in the Octo expansion, including SNES and N64 cartridges. The gear randomization sound effect is the GameCube startup sound sped up. If you pay close attention to the sounds the squid beacon make, you can actually hear distorted inkling sounds. Marie is ambidextrous. She can be seen using her right hand to write and her left hand to eat with chopsticks. Inkopolis Tower from Splatoon 1 can be seen from Inkopolis Square in Splatoon 2. Marie's favorite band is the Chirpy Chirps, an in-game chiptune band that had several tracks released in version 2.0 of Splatoon. Judd's fur is naturally in the pattern of a tuxedo. Splatoon's single-player trailer from 2014 features references to bloopers from Super Mario Bros. and Octoroks from The Legend of Zelda. The sunken scrolls when flipped through have a flipbook animation of the Zapfish, Judd, and Sheldon. A splat bomb can be thrown into the hoop of Splatoon 1 shooting range. Once scored, a green sparkle effect will occur. Using your special attack actually fills up your ink tank. Splatoon is a portmanteau of the words splat and platoon. Splatoon won the game award for the best shooter and multiplayer game of 2015. It was also the sixth best selling game on the Wii U with about 5 million units sold. Splatoon 3 will be adding emotes for the first time in the series history and I'm not sure if I should be excited or scared. Wow, you actually made it to the end of the video? 
Well, thanks for watching. This has been an incredible project me and the rest of the Switchtop crew have been working on for about a year now. We started back in January and we hit a bit of a bump near like spring, early summer, but we got back on it and basically every week since then I've been posting a 100 facts video and it's just insane that it's coming to an end. So hope you guys enjoyed this 1000 facts video. Um, huge shout out to my boy Kagan for helping compile this list. Uh, I'd say about 40, 45% of the facts I think 40. I, 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 did, I did a lot of them, but uh, that and also editing the 3D Mario section uh, has just been big, big help. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody for watching the video. If you made it this far and you still want more Switch Stop videos, go check out this video right here. This one I'm pointing at. Uh, it's my favorite video I've ever made, my Wii Sports documentary that I posted. It's my first video on the channel back last June. Uh, 2021 uh, so go check that out if you'd like um, but yeah, you know maybe go do something else I don't know two and a half hours of Nintendo facts I may get a little bored at some point so um thanks everybody for watching and with all that said smack from the switch shop signing out peace